maybe I need to kind of pull back on this and pull my finger out and stop playing. I can always play afterwards, which I did. Pull my finger out? What? Yeah. <laughs> pull your finger out of what? His butt. Yeah. <laughs> you, okay. you, you clearly are not fluent in Night Demon, sir. No, I mean, I, I assume that's what he meant, but you, you, I really try hard not to assume because you know what happens when you assume, right? I just, I mean, to hear it clearly is just, you know, it's important. <laughs> it is. And that would be a very good opener to the show. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> just completely out of context. We don't provide context. Context is for professionals. Welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast. Dedicated in bringing you all the latest information, news, and opinions. This is the best show for new and veteran guardians alike, where we share tips, tricks, and tools to help you succeed and enjoy playing even more. So with all that said, let me hand you over to your hosts, the Triumph Hunting Titan Night Demon, the Pink Panted Pansy Purotee, and your Hunter Master Ranger, Mr. No One Responds in Real Life! And welcome to the Two Titans and a Hunter this week. I am your gracious host, Night Demon, joined by the Perotti and the returning Hunter Master Rager, Mr. No One Respawns in Real Life. So guys, Destiny, eh? Hey, Destiny. That's a thing. thing. It is. Air uh-huh. accuracy has been muddled with. Not yet. So not yet. No, no, was, no one oh, hasn't. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Those those Sorry. numbers don't mean anything. Why, why are we you told you that a long time ago, that those numbers don't mean anything. We told you, walk what? along the ground, don't even bunny hop. Just keep walking and you will be fine. Jump, yeah, but those numbers, numbers don't, things, things, don't mean a thing to you. You jump in the air. Uh, no. I mean, to, to streamers and, and, no. and hardcore no. PvPers. No, no, you shouldn't be jumping. That's your first mistake. That is. Jump. I agree. Run and I'm slide. With you, Run but and they slide. They believe something else, right? Well, we're not. We're not here to talk to them. They have their own platforms. We don't need to speak for them. They can speak for themselves. Yeah, and I'm telling you to stop jumping. Yeah, that's that's no how, that's how you, that's how you know they care. Jumping on the bed. <laughs> uh, so, have you guys had a good week in Destiny this week? Uh, yeah, kind I, of. I think I've played Destiny this week. Good, good. That that gives us something to talk about. What about you, Respawn? You said you've been doing your dungeons and your raids and still yeah, are, I've been, I've been doing fruitless. All that. Um, I've been having your... fun. Last night's raid, I was laughing so hard. It doesn't matter that we took a raid that lasts about 45 minutes and turned it into a four-hour event. It was. It, it reminded me of old school Frozen when we would all get together and do raids. Just we were We were laughing so hard, we were failing the raid itself. So, that was that was the nostalgic experience. But other than that, no luck with anything really. I can craft stuff that I want to craft, but I still haven't gotten any exotics from any place important. Good. Yeah. But it's still what fun. What you to Mr. Demon? Well, I've I've just been doing some like working on my triumphs. Uh, I played a bit more Gambit because I thought I haven't finished doing that yet. Um, from last week, so I spent quite a lot of time on the Leviathan. Just trying to get all those done for this last week. Containing all the nightmares. Yeah, I mean, I've I've completed my derelict Leviathan triumphs. I've got, I believe it's probably going to be next week is going to be the last week of the story. So uh, there'll be like one, two, three that I can get next week or maybe even the week after. So um, I need two more of those, like those things that you get to upgrade your crown those things Philip figment of darkness i need two more ah, yeah yes. i need two of I them i think of the bound essence but yeah. two of them i need to listen to one more haunted radio session in the helm if the helm's still going to be there next week you know it's looking dodgy and i need to do three more of the uh nightmare containment activities although i appreciate you hopping into the show arc the fact that you're at a theme park don't, don't talk to you at a theme park. Don't talk and to And not going to do lore today is a little hurtful, but whatever. Don't engage him in conversation. We don't acknowledge him on holiday. He's on holiday. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, he just popped in to say hi. I'm at a theme park. I'm not doing roar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not only am I not here, I'm going to tell you that I'm not here and, <laughs> and rub in where I am. Yeah. Just, just great. Congratulations on the show. I'm going to go ride a roller coaster. Bye. Um, but th- there is one that I'm kind of missing uh, on my gear, it says, for the season of The Haunted. Uh, it says that... Oh, wait, oh, it's not working now. There you go. Uh, because it's missing. Shape each of the opulent weapons reprised in the season of Haunted. I have done none of those. Um, and I have yet to do the nightmare uh, weapons. So I've done I none of them. I don't have a single one of them to even extract the thing to reshape. I've, oh, really? I've, I've played what feels like a good deal of the containment and I can make an Ostringer and that's it. I think I have like one or maybe two of the others. Are you I wearing have... the armor? The armor matters. No, no, the armor doesn't matter. The armor matters to get the, the, I've the got currency. materials out, out the ears. I just can't get, you know, the proper weapons to drop. You can't get the red border or, weapons. The same as me. Or yeah. to drop with the red borders. Yeah, I'm getting plenty of crap to drop. It's just none of it that I want or care about. Okay, but you said you you can craft an Ostringer, right? What? Well, mm-hmm. Why would you craft an Ostringer? You don't seem like a PvP guy. No, but you. that's all he's had to drop with the red frames that he's able to that's, do. Is that's what he's yeah, saying? Because okay. because I'm well, I just, what... just because I'm I'm able to, and I assume there's a triumph somewhere for you know craft these things. So I figure if I can craft it, I'm gonna at least craft one of them. Okay. I haven't said I fired a single shot with it yet. Yeah, I, you, you still have to grind through and level the stupid thing up. I have one. It That's exists. easy to do. There's two really good areas to do that. That the leveling up takes no time. Um, right. Getting yeah. It oh, and, is yeah. No, problem. I know. It's yeah. No. Yeah. No, the leveling up's the easy part. It's the yeah. It, getting it's it getting hold of the weapons to level to yeah to do them. I'm quite glad it's, that. And depending on how far you've leveled up, um, in that thing, I've got it so that when I I get a guaranteed red bar every time I open that chest for the first time, yep. and I get a guaranteed mm. red bar every time I focus a weapon yep. for the first time. Yeah. So that's two guaranteed red bars a week. You need yep. to get that done, yeah. bro. Yeah, I think I finally have those unlocked but then I haven't had time to do anything. I think I've played three strikes this week that I just did this morning. And that's all I've had time for this week. I think I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat as you parody is the fact that the red weapons don't seem to drop. And I've done the nightmare containments from one to three. That's why it's encouraging you to to get those things because they don't drop. They drop very badly. Yeah. And, and the, just, just the time commitment, like, like I enjoy the containment well enough because it's just like a big, you know, sort of horde mode and you can absolutely no life it or just say, I have a half hour to play. Let me jump on and do this because it requires no thought or coordination or anything. Hmm. But just the time commitment, like like getting anything out of that activity. And again, you know, it's not a hard activity. I understand. I'm not going to get like three red bar weapons every time I run it. But just running it over and over and over and getting nothing out of it. It's like why? Why am I doing this? Why am I playing this game? This is very silly. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. It's just. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah the, I mean, to response the, point, the, like you, you almost, like you almost have to rely on those guaranteed drops because mm-hmm. good luck otherwise. Now yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's someone out there who's like, I ran six of them and I got six red bars to drop because yeah, it's all RNG. So you do get quite a high blessed, chance of them cursed. to drop from the chests with the opulent key. So if you run around and you you do your tier three and you get a key to drop out of there, or you do the extra chests that spawn after the tier three, mm-hmm. you get a chance to get the key to then run around the Leviathan to go and open another chest to possibly get another red framed weapon. Correct. Yeah. So I, I there think are I've those, one and I have had or two out of those yeah. total, like out of all those chests, like like yeah, because I, I run around and, and and I get at least one of the two extra chests every time. I don't always find the second one. Because sometimes I'm with a group who understands it, and sometimes I'm with you know the random group who just all well, stands at the end. Ghost, and I'm like, put, put put the ghost thing well, on. Well, and... well, no, I mean I do. Like I do run around and put the ghost on, and I'm running around looking for all the doors. Sometimes I just either miss it or I'm not close up to the door or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and believe me, it's not from lack of effort. Like I, I know what I need to do. <laughs> you just sometimes don't have it the time just to do it. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Or or I, I open both the chests and I end up with, you know, materials in a blue and I'm like, great, this was absolutely worth my time. <laughs> oh, I hate that. That is the worst feeling ever, man. You know all that work and you get a blue or nothing at all. So here here's your materials that you're overflowing 
it, it, at least I haven't had any lack of materials this season. Like I have not once walked up to that stupid staff and I have it say, sorry, you don't have enough of the nightmare. I don't even remember what the thing oh. is called. Like, I'm sorry. I've you, you don't have enough of these. A lot. Like those, I, I've had <laughs> oodles. I, I don't even know where they come from. Cause I don't feel like I've played that much of anything, but I've got oodles of those, you know, so they plenty, come from, but they come from opening the chest at the end, and they come from the, okay. Material. the materials in that yeah. area. They give them to you. Mm. Well. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I I I pick up bounties constantly while I'm in that too in the yep. in, in, in the castle. I'm like I pick up the bounties all the time, and I, yeah, every time I see the the petrified Aragor, I pick that up. Going, yeah, you're just material. Let me pick you up, and yeah. Okay. So I I figured just doing all that, I was just getting them as I ran around, but because yeah, that's usually my problem at this point in the season. It's like I don't have any of the whatever whatever seasonal thing it is this time and i'm like I vestige just, I of dread because i have need, no yeah. things yeah so i've yeah. got plenty of the materials just none of the luck and if you max out RNG list. if you max out the crown in the helm it goes up to five thousand of your vestige of dread before it caps out so yep once, once right it gets now. to five thousand you then have to go and spend it <laughs> and yeah. of that five thousand i'm already at like forty eight hundred you know but the thing about it is, is I do run out. Like I've run the hell out of those things, and I've run out many, many times, and have have had to resort to going around uh, putting them out on my goats where I can see the the materials, and yeah. I've had to go hunt for those materials because I have run out quite a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then once I lifted it to five thousand, I haven't run out as much since then, but it still happens. I mean, I am enjoying the the gameplay loop of doing the tier three. And then maybe sticking around and doing like two or three more because there is a triumph for doing that, which I wasn't aware of because I was doing like... Well, like in a row or... Totally? Yeah, there's there's triumphs for just doing, going up and doing a tier three. And I think it's, uh -huh. it's up to like 50 of those. But then there's also another triumph that says after doing a tier three, you then have to continue and do a, a tier one, two, and then go back to three again for it to count. So I, th I think there's a, you have to do 50 of those. So... They want you to keep doing that kind of gameplay loop of just staying in that area and doing it over and over again. And what I did find is even when the team did disperse, if I planted another flag to start off another containment, more people would suddenly turn up, which was quite mm -hmm. nice. I think I've only failed like one or two of the level one and twos to get to the boss. So, But it, it just kind of continues until you get to the boss, which is quite handy. You just lose out on getting the, the heavy... Ammo People drop. are starting to understand yeah. that if you go to the bottom area, yeah, uh, whenever you go to the activity, if you go to the bottom part, whatever it's called, Castellum or whatever, mm. um, when you go to the bottom part, you're more likely to be put into one that's already in progress. So that's probably why you're uh, you're getting people to come in because it's more likely to drop them with you because you've already got one in progress. Whereas the top one, if people join that, it's more likely to drop you in an area that doesn't have one actively going on. But yeah, I, I, like, I like the whole loop of then disappearing, going down into the pools or going to the pleasure gardens, using your key, then fighting a few baddies in there, doing a few of the... Um... Have you been doing the secret missions too? Yeah, I did all those in the first week. Don't be silly. They're triumphs. They, I've got them out of the way. Done, dusted. <laughs> oh, but have you guys been on the Leviathan this week? Uh, For the new one with Keitel? Yeah. No, but have you actually no, been on the Castellum? And gone to the pleasure gardens and the royal pools. No, <gasps> there's well, new I, stuff. I went to one of those for a key. There's new stuff. But, okay, I'll check it out. There are, if you go to the royal pools or you go to the, uh, the pleasure gardens, there are these little uh -huh. red glowy kind of balls that have suddenly appeared, and they're giving you more lore. It's kind of a really yeah more audio the dialogue. Lore balls, there's huh? no, there's no kind of triumph hidden behind them. It's just that you'll hear like Keitel talk or Zavala talk or uh, Zavala's wife talk. All these uh, p extra parts of the law, which has been quite nice to kind of... Uh, uh, first of all, I thought it was kind of an extra triumph or something. So I kind of I ran to about three of these different things and they were all just giving me different stories. But props to Bungie. They've they've added more stuff into like the, the social space and and the, added more to the the gameplay i guess and to the story for this season hopefully it continues up, next week an update to what you're talking about we have rat reflex says they're in all locations there's two in the castellum three in the royal pool four in the pleasure gardens and they're called memory there you go 
They weren't in the Castellum yeah. the first couple of days of this week. Yeah, Maybe they've been added um, over the last global. day or so. You calling him a liar? No, it just they they weren't. Yeah, it sounds like calling him a liar. They weren't in the Castellum. They weren't in the Castellum at the beginning of the week. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bungie are just adding these things, uh, and there's several different locations. I do have a video from Time Sausage Game, which I will link in the show notes, which goes over all the locations. He because he dutifully went round and went right. It can spawn here, 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 and here. Like ah, oh, that'd be handy for people to know. Oh, and don't get locked in the um, chest rooms after the doors close, because that's it kills you. Doesn't like you staying in there and hiding. And and why were you hiding in the chest room after? Well, the door no, closed? I I wasn't hiding. I went in there, opened the last <laughs> chest, and the door shut behind me because it was it counted down, and I couldn't get out. And then it's uh, you're out of bounds. You return to bounds, and I'm like, oh, I can't return to bounds because you shut the door on me. Uh, and then you died. I died. Oh, kind of a... I don't know if you guys have known. You know how a lot of the builds that we're currently using depend on things being on fire, right? And, um, you know, you have iridescent on a shotgun, on a submachine gun, on a sidearm, and a sniper, I believe? Yeah. That's all the things you can get it on? Yep, yep, yep. Um, If you put... Uh, is it firefly spec? Let me double check. If you put dragonfly spec on those weapons, it increases the range at which your your ignition explosions and your searing explosions reach. So you can set more things on fire further away if you have that mod equipped to whatever you have your uh, incandescent on. And so, especially for the warlocks that have to stay in the air, constantly setting things on fire, that's your best bet right there, is either the miter mini tool or the what's the sidearm? The callus, the callus, uh, barang, barang. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that with incandescent and dragonfly spec really spreads the fire. It really, really. Where, does. where have you got this information from? Uh, I got it from, from a friend of mine, and it was actually recently on one of the YouTubers I watched. I can't remember if it was Asked Across, but it is a thing. It was it was told to me by a friend. I noticed it myself, and then it was verified by a YouTuber. Because so the only Dragon reason I'm a- spec works for incandescent weapons. The only reason I'm asking is because I found a video from Sirius who did testing incandescent perks, and he tested mm-hmm. with Firefly, and he found that Firefly did less damage than the, with the incandescent on. We're not talking damage. We're talking about spreading the fire. The 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 radius at which it spreads the explosive damage and the fire. Uh, but surely, scorching, Firef- scorching. Firefly spec or dragonfly spec should only work with dragonfly or firefly. Whatever yeah. it is. I mean, that's what it is. it's worked with weird things in the past, but it doesn't. It, nobody said anything about increasing damage. It just increases the radius. And I did. I have noticed the radius is much bigger whenever I apply the spec on there. Mm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, test it for yourself, dude. No, I've, I've watched, I've I've watched the video from Sirius. He did testing the yeah. incandescent perk with lots of other... Yeah, you're talking about damage. He says it didn't do any extra damage. What about the radius? What about how far the explosions went? What about how far you could catch something on fire? Did you test that? I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm, maybe that's the difference. Maybe he's wow. looking for one thing and the other thing is what's better. I'll tell you what. See, T-Rex says he knows what I'm talking about. See, there's somebody out there that knows. You don't know T-Rex. Don't side with him. (laughs) No, but it it, it definitely does increase the radius. And especially if you're using something like the the Drain with the Warlock. uh, What's it called? When you get headshots, when you get headshots, they immediately ignite whatever perk that that's called that only the Warlock gets. When you get a headshot, they immediately ignite, and that explosion is really far too. No, apparently, uh, the right. So I've just quickly watched the, that video I was telling you about by uh-huh. uh, Sirius. It says that the dragonfly spec does not work, which it says on the dragonfly spec increases the radius and damage of the dragonfly. So the explosion radius mm-hmm. and damage can be a bit random depending on the distance of the enemy. Sometimes people mistake 
that the Dragonfly spec is working. And he's got a video testing it. So okay. you you are you are so, sometimes uh, the people. randomness gives the illusion of it working. Okay, I could see that. Yes, I could see that. But because once you start paying attention to how big the explosions are, yeah, it might have been a. Uh, oh God, I'm playing the pill that a doctor gives you that doesn't do anything, but your mind placebo. makes it work. Placebo. Could have been a placebo. But he does say that like the mods that like if you put on for like minor spec, major spec, boss spec will work with it and spread and and make it explode even more. And the scorch damage is increased with it. Yeah, apparently there's a YouTuber not Nodnaz N O D N A H S that put out a video basically saying, Hey, this is a thing and I found a thread on Reddit where they're basically like, this dude puts out clickbait videos, it's not real, he does it for the YouTube revenue. Um one of the commenters does say, you know, the you know the reason for this there is a slight difference in range. I guess in the video, it says the second time he's applying it to two enemies that are closer together. So it sort of spreads because of their closest together, not because of the what the perk is giving you. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's a little bit of RNG involved. There's a little bit of maybe a slight range boost, but it's also from a dodgy source. And I'm not saying that's the one that Respawn saw or heard about, but I don't know who that is. Though. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, there are videos out there saying, oh, this works but it doesn't necessarily yeah. work. in the video uh, Sirius goes to the lost sector on the throne world where he's got three enemies that are just sitting in the same space and he tests the same gun with the different perks so there's no inconsistency with spacing of the enemies and shows you what the damage is so it's a fair enough test you know what fine I, I didn't want it on my gun anyway <laughs> <laughs> no but I don't want you but, using uh, the perk if if you're being told that it does work when I've actually seen, like, in video testing, that it doesn't work and it it does less well, damage. I, I believe actual in video testing. You know, it could have been a placebo effect because I wasn't I was never paying attention to the radius until somebody says, "Hey, this works." And then when I put it on, it felt like the explosions were larger. You know, so I, I I'm I'm human. I'm fallible. I could have I could have been sucked I'm into not, the. I'm not to blaming the, you. This mojo. I'm just saying that I I found a video <laughs> this week which was really interesting and it counters your point, which is really weird. We just don't want you running around using perks that aren't doing you any good. Exactly. Yeah, no, having, those good having those placebo perks, and we don't want anybody do else running around doing exactly the same thing. Easy. Now I now I do hear if you if you run that perk with an incandescent weapon in the raid, you do have a negative zero chance of getting the raid exotic to drop, and that's probably what your problem. There you go. Well, that could be it because I don't use anything incandescent on the last boss. Up to the boss, right. yeah. But maybe you should. Maybe I should. I don't know. So, Perotti, please tell us what we've got to look mm -hmm. forward to next week in Destiny. We do have many things to look forward to next week in Destiny. First of which being uh, bonus nightfall ranks all week long. Ooh. <gasps> so, if you want to get your nightfalls on, you can get your nightfalls on. And uh, which one in particular might you want to do? Uh, you're going to need to push through the Cabal Forces in the Proving Grounds Nightfall. Team Scorched comes back to the Crucible, so if you haven't run around and shot people with Scorch Cannons and set them aflame to get your weekly challenge done, next week's your I week to do it. I haven't done that one yet. Well, then there you go. Next week's your week to do it. And Team Scorched is you get a Scorch Cannon, everyone gets a Scorch Cannon, and you're running around, running around shooting people with Scorch Cannons. Do that's I get it. to use my super? And you need... Oh, no. the Proving Grounds. Oh, you're, that's going to be awful super, for Nightfall. Oh, your super is no. down a Scorch Cannon. I, what else I do think we have besides 50, Proving Grounds? 50 kills you yes, need? Yes, it I is think, 50 kills. And you get more points, isn't Wait, it, if you get in-air kills? Or detonations? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it, it sounds like a lot, but it usually it doesn't really take that long because everyone's jumping around Scorch Cannons. There's a lot of easy targets in the world. Yeah. Now, this is one game mode, however, you should jump. This is the one time in PvP I give you full permission to jump into the air and fluke but around. Is airborne accuracy affected? Or hop around. That's what I need to know. He's just saying matter. that because he wants you to be an easy target for him. No, shooting people out of the air is way harder than shooting people on the ground. If you're on the ground, you're a sitting duck in Team Scorched. Yeah. You want to be in the air in Team Scorched. See, that's what I thought until, again, you can determine when that thing detonates. So if they're in the air, you can shoot it where they're going and then release it. When they're there, mm -hmm. and it goes you can that. do that. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> okay. but, but one thing you could do is, if you're looking for pinnacles, your raid is going to be deep stone crypt, and your dungeon will be prophecy. 
So if you're pinnacle hunting next week. No, hold on. Go and, back, back, backtrack and, a little and, bit. Uh, backtrack a little bit. To the, Is that to the, the to only the raid? Ground? No, yeah. it's not. It's not the only raid. That's where your pinnacle will come from. That's right. That's right. Sorry. Um, is the Proving Grounds the only Nightfall where we're going to get the bonus Nightfall stuff? It's just that one week? Unless. Well, well, well that's what I'm wondering, because I've heard people saying that should be the next. I haven't seen Bungie see this, but I've seen a bunch of other folks see this that says the Grand Masters should go live next week. And oh. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it's. I, I, I saw the word Grand Masters, like the 12th this week. We're getting ready for Grand Master Nightfalls. Yes. So again, right. I haven't read. I have pulled a full respawn this week and I've not actually read the TWAB thoroughly. Ooh. I've just glanced through it. So wow. I don't know if the night hey, Grandmasters are actually the yes. way, dude. Right. Respawn, are you in yeah, game are, now? Are, are actually coming? I'm in game now, right. yeah. If you hover over where it, the Grandmaster selection is, it tells you the actual date and I believe it is the 5th of July. So to answer your own question, do you get all the Grandmasters this coming week? Vanguard, here we go. Vanguard, Grandmasters. Live. Okay. July 5th. There yeah. you go. So my question is, it says enjoy bonus nightfall ranks all week long. So is that not just enjoy bonus strike ranks, Vanguard's ranks? It says nightfall. Normally it's it, it, bonus it has to be strike loot. Because Vanguard is the bonus. So Yeah, uh, you know, what I'm confused it's, it's at is whether say. it's whether it's in bonus loot that you get in the nightfalls or if it's just bonus ranks that you get in the Vanguard by playing just the nightfalls. Another question that Bungie is going to put words out, and then we're going to have to guess at what exactly well, they mean. I understand that. Yeah. No, but the, the thing is, where Bungie do several different things, they're not actually. I get right. what they're saying they're, that you have to play the Nightfalls exactly to get the getting. bonus ranks for the Vanguard Strike playlists or for for Zavala, basically. But you can only get the bonus ranks if you play Nightfalls. Okay, fair enough. But then they also do bonus, uh, like drops and things. So that I think that's what's confusing. Normally they say it's it's Vanguard bonus, or I, I don't ever remember it being just Nightfall bonus. Right, and and I'm guessing they haven't created a new bonus for Nightfalls. I'm assuming when you turn the game on, they'll say, "Hey, enjoy increased Vanguard ranks all week long." That's oh, what I'm assuming it's going to yeah. say when you turn on the game on Tuesday. So you can just do the lower tier like Nightfalls. The worst, the worst Nightfall to do for that week, man. That, that is that, that is a not, terrible nightfall. That it, one's not the worst nightfall. No, I I disagree. That end boss is well, uh, not the worst. Not the worst. And one. the room the, with the, the wor- tanks. Ugh. The worst. The worst one is is Captain. I'm going to disappear and and set the shanks onto you and we'll electrocute you. That's the worst one. Okay, you may have a point. That in my brain. That one. That one I will I will assign you a good close second to, but that is not the worst one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So it's still a really really bad one to pick. Proving that grounds week. nightfall for next week will have barrier and was it? It's barrier and overload. Which ones are the circle? It's circle. No, it's not circle. It's triangle and square, which is that's uh, unstoppable and shield. Okay. So we've got those, and the shields are going to be... That is going to be Glaive, Arc, Solar, and Void. Uh, there will be bonus damage dealt with Fire. 25 bonus damage dealt with Fire, and 50% extra damage received by Fire. And Ooh. the weapon, it looks like, is going to be the Silicon Neroma, which is your sniper rifle. If you're uh, interested in getting that. That's, that's, that's what you're dangling in front of me, Bungie. Come on now, I'm not, not Come interested. On. Come on, man. I've got I've got one. It sits in the vault. Terrible weapon, it's terrible knife. Come on. Come on, Fungo, really? That's the best you could do. What uh, yeah. I, I guess so. It is. But if you un- until until the next best. I think if you've done all your grandmasters and you are just looking to guild your title, normally when the grandmasters go live, you do have the drop down box to select all of the nightfalls that are available. So you have proven grounds, insight terminus. Okay. Warden of Nothing, Corrupted, uh, Inverted Spire, and then the Arms Dealer. So those are your six for this season. So, can you can you pick your Nightfalls? No, uh, I, I I haven't gilded anything to do with Nightfalls. I think I've done about four unique Nightfalls, and I need to do one complete one with Arc to round that out to then uh, be able to then go back and gild it. So I'm nearly there. I think I think I've done one Grandmaster ever 
because I have a hung jury for it, and that's it. That's the extent of my grandmastering. That's, that's good I, have, I, have a, I have a lot of adept weapons in my vault, so I'm assuming I've done a few grandmasters. I've got adept weapons, but it's <laughs> definitely not from trials. I do one every season <laughs> that it tells me on to my challenges that I need to do a grandmaster. And it's normally in the last two or three weeks because that's by the point that I actually get to the level to get into doing a Grandmaster, which is quite hard to do. So I think I've still got about six levels to go, I believe. Oof. I think I'm at power level 1565 without my artifacts. Um, See, that is, that is the trick, though, isn't it? Is you have to have the right team with the right loadouts and you have to have a good communication man and finding that especially in like in you know an lfg because people aren't on at all times mm. is a hard thing to do it is gotta come up with a plan and speaking plan the work and work the plan speaking of our Paris. challenges would you guys like to know what our challenges are for next week no yes you would i would tell me tell me what i'm doing <laughs> I'll, I'll have when the week rolls around yeah i i love when, when they pop up and say i've already done them when the week goes live that's no better feeling that is a good feeling that is yeah. a good feeling so next week our challenges are for week seven we have sorrow bound seven complete bound in sorrow seven and defeat champions within the derelict leviathan and that's complete bound in sorrow seven and 40 champions and that will give you challenge xp plus plus Nullifying Reconciliation, Complete Sever, Reconciliation, using only Void Subclass, Void, Kinetic, or Stasis Weapons. That will give you one Figment of Darkness, Challenge XP+, plus, and a pat on the back for doing that again. Binding 2. Throughout the Season of the Haunted, bind Nightmares after completing Tier 3 of the Nightmare Containment and open Opulent Chests in Derelict Leviathan. And they'd like you to have completed 30 of those and open 15 chests. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Challenge XP++, plus plus, and that's it. Shape of Nightmare 2. Shape any haunted weapon, and that will give you Challenge XP+. Plus. Beam Cannon. Defeat targets with trace rifles and shotguns in Gambit, and there's bonus progress for defeating Guardians. Shotgun kills. There will be 60 of those, please, and 100 trace rifle kills. That will give you Challenge XP++, plus plus, and some Bright Dust. Fleeting Glory. Complete Crucible matches in the Glory Rank playlist and bonus progress for wins. And that would be 15 of those. That will give you Challenge XP++++ plus 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 and some Bright Dust. So that's not any of the featured modes. That's not Control. That will just be the competitive playlist that you can... I think it gives you a powerful reward. It doesn't give you a, a pinnacle. So it's that playlist that you want. You can either do in a group or you can do solo. So there is that to it. And then finally, next week, we have Grandmaster. Complete any Nightfall on Grandmaster. And that's Challenge XP++ plus 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 and some Bright Dust. And if you would like to spend said Bright Dust, there is a store called Eververse, which also will give you stuff if you give it real-world money. Uh, they convert that into silver, and then you can purchase stuff before it comes up for Bright Dust. So next week, which is going to be the 5th of July, we have for silver, so this is the real world money part first, we have the weapon ornament for the Arbalest, which is called Electromagnetic Executioner, and that will be for 700 silver. Next we have the armor ornament for the Hunters for the Lucky Pants, called Fortunate Beasts, that will be 600 silver. For the Titans, we have the ornament for the No Backup Plans, Exotic Gauntlets, that is called the Physoelectric Statagem. That will also be for 600 silver. And then we have for the Warlocks, for their Necrotic Grips, Exotic Gauntlets. That's called the Replicant Exploit. And that will also be for 600 silver. Next we have the Thunderous Sword, which is a legendary emote, for 500 silver. Looks a bit like Thundercats, but I'm not saying that it is. But it could be, and I possibly might want it. And for the last silver offering this week, we have the Loyal Companion Exotic Emote, which is only available for silver, which is the Forever a Guardian's Best Friend. So I think this is the one that's petting the doggo for 1,000 silver. And I believe that's the one for charity as well. So that's the featured silver for next week. Moving on to the Bright Dust, which you've accumulated from doing all your challenges and all your bounties over the last couple of weeks or last couple of months. 
We have the Rocket Stomp exotic emote for 3,250 Bright Dust. We have the weapon ornament for the Aegis Scepter called Springtime Scales. That will be 1,250 Bright Dust. We have the Ghost Purple a Legendary Transmat for 450 Bright Dust. The Seven Sisters Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. Really good one. It has kind of a star effect on it. Pretty cool. And then further down on your Bright Dust offering pages. We have the All Alone Exotic Emote, and that's 3,250 Bright Dust. The Knitting Project, which is a legendary emote, for 700 Bright Dust. The Prized Ivory, legendary weapon ornament for the Austringer Hand Cannon, for 700 Bright Dust. That looks like a new one, uh, so have a look at that one in store. It might not be the same as the original Austringer Hand Cannon ornament that, was, uh, that came with Menagerie. I may be wrong, but in the preview it looks completely different. Next we have the exotic Sparrow, the Core Deception, for 2,500 Bright Dust. We have the Cathartic Filigree, which is your Hunter ornament for the Celestial Nighthawk. That will be 1,500 Bright Dust. The Pyretic Footfalls for the Path of the Burning Steps for the Titans. That will be 1,500 Bright Dust. The Coiled Lasso. For the Warlocks, for the Ephidian Aspects, that will be 1,500 Bright Dust. The Weapon Ornament for the Black Talon, the Sunrise Sabre, that will be 1,250 Bright Dust. And then finally, the Atheon's Projection, which is your Legendary Ghost Projection, for 1,500 Bright Dust. And if you're saying to yourself, where do I go and get such wonderful exotics? You know, where can I go to go and get these wonderful armor pieces to then equip said armor ornaments that I've now purchased in the Eververse store? Well, I can tell you that there are legendary and master lost sectors available each and every day throughout the season. All you have to do is go and visit them. There is a little flag outside. You can select whether you want to do the legendary version or the master version. Legendary is slightly easier with a less chance of an exotic to drop for that day. But the master is meant to be a common chance at the exotic two drop. Not necessarily the case. It might be better if you run through a legendary a couple of times. You might have more luck. But each and every day there is a different exotic available on a different lost sector throughout the system. And this is the rotation for next week. Hello. Hello. So Monday the 4th of July, happy Independence Day, is the excavation site 12 on the EDZ giving exotic helmets. Tuesday the 5th of July, which is Skydock 4, is also on the EDZ, that will give you exotic legs. Wednesday the 6th of July will be the quarry on the EDZ giving exotic arms. Thursday the 7th will be the K1 crew quarters on the moon giving exotic chess pieces. Friday the 8th of July will be the K1 logistics on the moon giving exotic helmets. Saturday the 9th of July will be the K1 revelations on the moon giving exotic legs. Sunday the 10th of July will be the K1 Communion on the Moon giving exotic arms. And then finally back round to Monday the 11th of July will be the Conflux on Nessus giving exotic chess pieces. Now just pay attention to the flags that are outside because they do tell you what burns there are and what champions are in there. So have a look at that because you may need to readjust your loadout. I will also include in our show notes the Lost Sector rotation for the week and some guides for those specific lost sectors if you are looking for a few tips on where the uh, enemies come out and what burns there are to get prepared before you even go and look for it. And do make sure that you have done the lost sector on that character uh, previously or on that day you can go in and do the lost sector, run through it and then once you've done that the flag will appear outside if you haven't done that lost sector at all if you're new to the game or if you've just neglected it because you're on a different character. So there you go. That is your Lost Sectors for next week. I want to know when the Hot Rod ship is going to be in Everest. I need to get that. Well, for that, with, uh, you, you need to know is listen to the show. No. Because you don't listen it. now. No. I still don't know what you're talking about, about practicing an Irish accent. I might go back and listen just for that. <laughs> no, that's off. Oh, is it off? Was off. He'd been practicing his Irish accent all week long, and I'd already pre-recorded all the law stuff, done all the editing for it. And he gets here, and he's oh, like, yeah. "Right, I'm ready to do it." I'm like, no, it's all right, mate. I've already done it. 
it takes forever to edit those things just like little tweaks and little kind of sound effects in the background and all the different voice things and i just i spent all week doing it whilst i was at work so that i could then get to the show at the weekend and not have to edit as much because that's always what what pushes the time out so that when it comes to monday if it's a good day like i'm feeling i'm feeling positive about today's episode that monday it'll be out it'll be no there's no issues but normally if there's law involved it pushes it out maybe so even worst day is wednesday because there's so many sound effects fair enough so I suppose now we've got all that out of the way, we we can delve right into this week at Bungie for the thirtieth of June. Even Yo, though it's July. The Twibby Twab. It is it July. Is July. Yeah, but only the Twibby Twab, as Respawn likes to put it. Twab, 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 twab. Ooh, it's not a game room. Let's so speak really how we're getting twab. ready for our Grandmaster Nightfalls. As we've as we've oh, just discussed. I, I assume that's a thing we're going to be getting ready for as well as the bunch of mental health resources that they link here which again i think we told you bungie.net slash mental health and they also have a link right in the twab that goes to the longer more convoluted url and uh yeah there's some prime gaming drops there's some mid-season weapon previews uh prime yeah, gaming team. drops have been gone for a while right so no, that's kind of a big deal here every Isn't month no, Are they're, they? Yeah, they're every month. Now, Bungie doesn't always tell you about them, but Amazon Prime has started sending emails with like multiple exclamation points like, hey, Carl, you can get these things. They're amazing. Is your name so, Carl uh, on Amazon? It is also in real life. Oh, <laughs> wow. I never knew your name was Carl. <laughs> We've only got 200, uh, what, 180 episodes, and I've never known your name was Carl. <laughs> I had a coworker that would greet me every morning by saying, Carl. Good to see you. If you understand the movie reference, then you're excellent. If not, then I'm no, sorry for you. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the llamas. I can. I can never. I can never see anything except the llamas when somebody says the name Carl. Mm, also fair. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. But no. But Amazon will tell you Prime Gaming is here. Bungie will tell you Prime Gaming is here. Like Just five. peeking around Prime will tell you Prime. Even as to crossing one of these videos this week because he was sponsored by Amazon Prime. Told me Amazon Prime is here. I'm like, I've got to go and check yeah, it out. And yeah. that was before the twab came out. So I did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you saying about the mental health, yeah, I've still got all the awesome. links in our show note from last week with the Bungie mental health link, the Guardian's mental health discords, their podcast and the Guardian downcast with their three episodes that they did on mental health. So go and check those out if you didn't last week. Oh, it's a thing. It's a this thing. is what we do every week for Respawn. It's it's for his mental health. This is response therapy. That's you think this is a show about destiny. That's, that that's, that's actually <laughs> we did we didn't say it was to increase your mental health necessarily. It was just for your yeah. mental health. I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying it'll be for worse. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah I'm, I'm not saying like your things will be better yeah. afterwards. I'm just saying it's for At your mental health. At the end of the that's day, the Luna purpose. contacted us and said, "Look, I need some respite away from him. <laughs> Take him for two, three, four hours a day." to do this podcast just get him out of the way and i just need time to myself i cannot deal with him any longer so really it's for her mental health oh i see that that mm-hmm. makes sense we're doing it for her yeah mm-hmm. and then she plays the llama coming in and giving me a look periodically to see whether or not i'm still yep. going yeah yep. that's just checking to make sure you haven't like snuck out of the house or something <laughs> and her plan isn't foiled that's all ah yeah, that makes so, sense. So, so who would like to tell us about tuning all those weapons and all those numbers that aren't going to make any difference because they're going to be different by the time you finish reading these? Seconds. I will, the, I'm, then I, they'll all be different by the time you, you finish reading them, so it won't matter anymore. Oh. I'm currently hitting a boss with a scythe, and he's only got a third of his health left, so am I. It's important. It's it's the thing that parody didn't have time to do this week, so I'm doing it for parody. Mm-hmm. Look at you, man. So, someone's got to. You know, speaking of which, have you guys been? Well, I know you haven't parody, but uh, Night Demon, have you at least been keeping up with the weekly banter with you know Zavala and Keitel? This and that and other and their missions. Parody, parody has as well. We've been doing our, we diligently been doing our story missions each week. Oh, I hey. have I have been up until this week when I can't get a second bound essence. I got one bound essence to drop, so I was able to then do, you know, the week the mission from last week and open the open the chest at the end. But now I can't get another bound essence to drop. 
just repeatedly so do a tier three. Next message. That's the that's yeah. that's what I that's what I've been doing. I, I've been asking very nicely for a bound essence, and it's like I'm sorry, we gave you one this week. We'll give you one in the next calendar week, maybe if you're good. So Ooh, I would I, I that, that's the one point where I would love to you know finish. You know, I, I ran I dutifully ran my void only run and did it properly. I did blow up an explodey barrel at one point. And was afraid that maybe that would negate my, you know, void only run. It did not. Also, oh. meleeing people with a giant wrench doesn't negate it either, because I guess the melee <laughs> the wrench counts as a kinetic weapon. I, I I hit someone with a wrench and I was like, oh, I hope that didn't just ruin this run. But no, we're good. I did nice. not pick up the side. I don't though, know. I didn't know there was a, a void only. I did the arc only. I didn't know there was a void only. Yeah, there was there was a solar solar only void only arc only for three different ones. Yes. In three, oh, there's another one coming weeks. up next week, which is also another void one. Also, and they're backwards compatible, right? I can go back. Yeah, and you do go it back anytime. and select it. Yes, that's the. Okay. It okay. tells you which mission it is and what you need to put as your loadout. Yeah, and yeah, it tells you which. Uh, which there is a triumph run. that says that you need to do fifteen seven missions, so that also counts because it depends on if you've done it on all your characters. So you may have done it each week on all your characters, so you may already be up to date. There's also one that says, I th- believe that you have to get 500 scythe kills within Sever only. So it doesn't count if oh, you're on Leviathan. I think Definitely. there is a separate one for just doing it on the Castellum and in the Leviathan. But there's a separate one for Side Sever. Scythe kills are not a problem for me. <laughs> well, no, I mean, the, the 500 yeah. kills, I'm, I think I've got like about 10 kills left to do. And I'm thinking, I could do that now. I, c- I could go back and do a Sever mission. And... Funny enough, I, I hadn't finished on my Warlock, so I went and did a Warlock first run through on the seventh mission. And what I found is that first mission with Crow is so long compared to the other seven missions that have come up over the season. Uh, did mm-hmm. you guys think that? I yeah, I, I sort of had the same yeah. experience because yeah, because I went back and ran ran one of them. I don't remember it wasn't to do the bounty, but I think it was just to, to rerun one of them. And yeah, I noticed the same thing. I was like, oh, this is this is because it didn't feel that long when I was doing it the first time. But I agree, it's much longer than all the Zavala ones. The, the like. Kaito one is even shorter. The thing that bugs me is Kaito sounds like she's whining. This is the Kaito that like came in and was like asking us to bow to her, right, or telling us to bow to her or whatever. But that, I think that's always in their nature, isn't it? That's in the Cabal's nature of you, you know? know, bow to me. And we stood up to her, and, and I think she respected us for that. Yeah, and I get that. I get the whole respect thing, but she's being whiny about it, and. She's not like, oh, you saw, when it comes to this, like, you saw a terrorist, you saw uh, a, a conqueror, you saw an enemy, you saw evil, you saw this and that and the other, but we saw a hero. And it's like, I get that, different cultures, different things, right, which is fine. But then after that, the second one that we did this week for her, she's just, she's all whiny about it, man. I'm just like, It's very title. similar to how this the is- uh, Elixney uh, perceived, what was it, Saint-14 in those... Um- diaries that we had at oh, the yeah. end of the the other season oh, yeah. you know, was the monster, those, yeah. those ink blot things that was exactly the same kind of way you know we see a champion but they see a murderer mm-hmm. a monster yeah. that yeah anyway so am i doing tldr buffs where am i we would like Where's you it? to take us through tuning those weapons please sir tuning those weapons all right first off we want to talk a little bit about the mid-season weapons preview Today we're talking about a few changes coming to some of our weapons, exotics, and airborne effectiveness, AE, as well. We may have some opportunities in the near future to answer more questions so that we ask, sorry, so we do ask that you continue to keep us updated on your thoughts and ideas over on the socials and in the forum. So, without further ado, here's the senior design lead, Chris Proctor. Uh, he says... Yes. Good day. That's Australian voice here. Good day. Chris Proctor here. Spent a lot of play last time in Season 18 and decided to bring some of the changes into an earlier release. We expect these changes to shift into the PvP meta a little over for the month or so before Season 18 launches. We have another set of changes coming in, smaller of course, since we moved some of them to Solstice. That's uh, I don't know what that uh, was. Really, I'm, s- I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that was more of a South Australian. I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, if Andy lived in Alabama. Scottish, Scottish, not British. He said Australian. I guess I met, uh, whatever. It's not. Shut up. Uh, TLDR. Uh, airborne effectiveness, improved baseline airborne accuracy, and aim assist for all primary weapons. 
added a static airborne effectiveness buff to some existing perks, raised the base AE stat on several exotic weapons, and tuned up some of the underperforming primary weapon subfamilies in PvP, increased pellet shotgun damage in PvP, increased ammo per special brick for Glaive's Forerunner and Ariana's Vow in PvP. Linear fusion rifles no longer receive increased flinch in PvE, although it will still receive increased flinch in PvP. Nerfs. Okay, so for that for that flinch, uh, for people that have done the dungeon, yeah. there's a part where you where you're on the final boss and you're focusing on killing her, potentially one facing her. Yeah, and if you're using the storm chaser, which most people are, those snipers that are tagging you the whole time you're trying to shoot her, knock you about nine and a half miles off course, even though she's standing right in well, front you. know what? I would blame Dave, because that is Dave's fault. Yeah. Dave. You know the member on your team that is meant to be taking those out while you can focus on the boss? Blame Dave. No. Blame Dave. We don't, we don't have... You no, need a Dave. It's, it's all about you need a her. Dave, and Dave needs to Dave deal with him. The boss. You didn't bring a Dave. <laughs> you should have had your Dave. Yeah. No, Dave shoots the boss. No, Dave <laughs> shoots, shoots the, the other enemies. We want a one phase title. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, we got some like, nerfs. Sounds like you we should have, have Dave shooting the shooting the snipers and the boss at the same time, so you can continue yeah. on the boss. Dave can multitask. Yeah, His name's Dave. Yeah, we have a nerf, singular, oh, and yeah. that is they've tuned down some overperforming exotics in PvP. It's a singular nerf, but it encompasses exotics. Yeah, right. The overperforming one. That airborne effectiveness on primary weapons. We were cautious about making weapons too easy to use while airborne at season seventeen launch. Now, preferring to can I, go ahead. I, I just want to address that. Now, when they they did the airborne effectiveness, and they were all like, "Here's the numbers," because we went into great detail about what all the numbers were going to be, and you'd have to spec into these builds and things. At no point mm -hmm. did they say. This is going to be just to see if we can get some numbers on this to then maybe tune nope. it later on. So I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure whether that was this this statement saying that they were cautious about making these weapon changes and now we're going to try and tune them. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think that they were initially going to go with what we were given. Not being horrible to Bungie, but I think I, f I feel that. And they've now had to kind of go, mm, th there's been way too many complaints in this department we need to deal with it yeah this because wasn't great and it was extremely bu buggy when it launched yeah so yeah sorry respawn no no it's fine i get it because you're right at no point in time did they say that this was only to get numbers no they made everybody believe this is what it is this is going to be it deal with it yeah and it, it was, was like you're going to have to spec into this they were going to you're going to have to put mods you're going to have to put exotics you're going to have to build into this yeah to make these work for you. And there was all these different stats and things. And I think at some point it, it just went wrong. It did. And for hunters, like, so the, the warlocks and the Titans had, had exotics that would give you like 50 or 60 to that stat. But hunters, I think somebody correct me, but I think the biggest bonus hunters got on any exotic was like 20 or 30, you know? So hunters being, airborne like they are like you know the jumpy yeah, yeah. shotgunners that everybody calls them right even though clearly warlocks are superior when it comes to airborne combat but you know to to hit them the hardest with the stompies nerf and then not even give them anything to compensate for it i i think it was kind of kind of an unfair thing for hunters it just shows I don't play PvP. how much they hate i don't the want hunters, to have a dog in this fight yeah but it, it doesn't seem right no. you know uh, but yeah, it's a joke that's taking too long. Yeah, it's it's around forever, dude. Get used <laughs> to it. Um, so uh, re <laughs> work, uh where we at? Reduce airborne penalties for all primary weapons. Again, reduce airborne penalties for all primary weapons. These changes are roughly equivalent to increasing the base AE stat of primary weapons by approximately fifteen. At low stat values. Uh, these changes are roughly, oh, I said that already, reduced airborne accuracy penalty at low AE by 20 to 40%, uh, dependent on weapon type. So you have auto rifle, pulse rifle, scout rifle, submachine gun, which is approximately 40%. Uh, 
hand cannons and sidearms are approximately 20%, and bows are about 30%. That's higher than I thought that would be. Hmm. Somebody wants to be Rambo, just shooting bows at people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, reduced airborne aim assist penalties for the above weapon types and changed the stat scale to provide more benefit to each point. And I have no idea what any of that means, so don't start asking me. Uh, <laughs> uh, reduced airborne auto aim bullet bending mouse and keyboard and controller penalty by 20%. Reduced airborne magnetism, uh, that is reticle stickiness for controllers only penalty by about 40%. Uh, so you get a lot more stickiness on controllers while airborne and a little bit better auto aim on mouse and keyboard while airborne is what that's telling me. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like they're just equaling it out. They're going to be the same, but they've had to reduce different points for mouse and keyboard opposed to controller, but it's probably going to work out to be the same. So it feels the same on either. Some perks now give a static AE stat buff in addition to their other effects. Air assault gives you plus 10 flat. At all times, in addition to the plus 60, uh, so 70 total when at low health. Extended mag gives you plus 10, base. Steady rounds give you plus 7, base. Raise the base AE stat on several exotic weapons listed in the exotic section below. So we're going to get into that, I guess. Weapon archetypes, hand cannons, specifically. Precision, 800. I'm sorry. I had a stroke. Give me a second. You did, yep. <laughs> uh, precision 180 RPM hand cannons have languished for quite a while, and we took some time to soften their time to kill in PvP. In playtesting, we did find that it makes them a lot more competitive, duh, particularly with their innate plus 25 bonus to AE. So you're telling me that lowering TTK makes them more competitive? No. Yes. Woo! No, no, Bungie, they're making they're, them competitive now. They're hiring people that know what they're doing, man. Mm -hmm. Mal Malfeasance 2023. That's all I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, my. I was thinking of the one from the the space raid where you can double your magazine well, capacity. I can tell you what hand cannons are 180 RPM. We have the Lunar's Hell, the Not Forgotten, the Survivor's Epitaph, Nature of the Beast, the Service Revolver. Frontiers Cry, the Icarus Hand Cannon, version 102, the Volpicula, the Nature of the Beast, the Cold Sweat, the Optative, Optative, whatever it is, the Service Revolver, the Old One, the Seventh Serif, Seventh Serif Officer Revolver, the Posterity, which is the one you're talking about, uh, West of Sunfall 7, the Old Icarus Hand Cannon, version 1, and the Trust. The trust was a nice one too. So th those that. are all your legendary ones. I, I don't know hundred percent on the um, exotics. If you're a hand cannon user, you'll know. <laughs> right. You'll know what they are. But um, I, I like no, but I like the one eighties. I mean, the the service revolver is a pretty decent one. I've got a, a good roll on that one. So yeah, malfeasance is one hundred and eighty as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was saying that's the only one I know because that's the only one I use because. I am old and oh, the one eighties feel good feel good to my old reflexes. Oh. What about the uh the the fire from the hip one? The fire from the hip one, which is the last word, which is addressed Thank you. later it's, on. Is that a one eighty getting nerve? No, that is not that's it doesn't matter no. anymore. No no one's gonna use it anymore. It's 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 useless. Continue reading, my friend. Okay. I don't know, it's useless. Uh so increased body shot damage from thirty seven to forty. For these hand cannons and crit moves from 57 to 60. Oh my god, so hand cannon Bungie, we're trying can you move away from hand cannons in PvP? Don't make hand cannons better. No. Make them worse. Never. Make them worse. That's that's you know. There are two there are there are two 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 schools. Constants in in, in well no, there's two constants in Bungie. Mm -hmm. One, hunters will be in PvP. Two, hand cannons <laughs> will run PvP. <laughs> Um, uh, because th those are the two constants in this game. There will be tons of hunters, and they will all be using hand cannons. That's how PvP works. I mean, so of course, they're, of course, they're going to improve hand cannons. Let's, let's, let's stop for a second, guys. Think about this. <laughs> yeah, we're stopping. Think back to a time 
when scout rifles were more week, prevalent than hand cannon, right? Remember how good it felt to have a rapid fire pulse rifle and you could actually have, you know, not get out sniped by a hand cannon. Remember those days where if somebody challenged you and your rapid Barely. fire scout rifle with a hand cannon, they lost. Remember those days? I'm a fan of those days. We need those days to come back. Hashtag bring scouts back. <laughs> Hashtag stop hitting your desk and bouncing your microphone all over the place. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I even put hand cannons, man. So sick of hand cannons with that range. And they can now kill in two crit, two body against Guardians, which gives about a 1.33 KD. Yeah, but what I'm looking at this point in time is that they may be high in stability, but they are very low in range. So you're looking at an average around 50 range for these 180 hand cannons. They're not low in range, though. You can still get sniped with a hand cannon, dude. What are you talking about? No, but... They might be low in range on paper, but they still... They'll get you at scout rifle ranges easy. I'm not sure for the... like. They are like mid-range 50s, so... So some if you of have them... explosive payload or timed payload, they have infinite range. Look, I'm just telling you what's on paper. I know. It's misleading, and I hate that. <laughs> no, but when you when you think of things like uh, what what can have good range, the Igneous Hammer can have eighty five range with an impact of ninety two. You've got the Duke MK forty four, which has a range of eighty two. You've got uh, Palindrome, which again is eighties. Uh, True Prophecy, eighties again if you can get it up there, and Fatebringer in the high seventies. Yep. And any of those, or most of those, can run, uh, can drop with uh, range. Yeah, but what I'm saying yeah. is because, but they are like RPMs of 120, you're looking at 140s. So they've got better range, so they, they can outrange these um, other hand cannons. That, that shouldn't, though. Like, I mean, I know I know it's it's a game and there's space magic. But if you take a hand cannon to a firing range, you the space and you magic. take an AR to a firing range, they're not gonna have the same range. <laughs> the accuracy is gonna space be magic. At long ranges, let's, man. let's move on to our space magic auto rifles. Uh, you should you should buff your real life weapons then. Just just do a buff on them. Okay. So our precision, uh, precision auto rifles. Yeah, precision four fifty auto rifles have fallen behind other subfamilies. Yep. Partly because they were more reliant on hitting at higher proportion for crits to reach their optimal time to kill. Increased body shot damage from 19 to 20. That's nice. Precision multiplier moves from 1.6 to 1.5. That's lower. Uh, crit damage stays the same at 30. And would you like to know what auto rifles are getting yeah. this kind of lovely buff? Uh, you got, I'm going to make you, you really excited now. The breakneck. Yes, but is, isn't that sunset? Yes, but where can you not use the breakneck? These are all PvP tunings. Oh, uh, I guess that's fair. Yeah. Iron Banner is now kind of. Does it matter? You know these. Yeah, Iron Banner is now. Let's game. face yeah. it. These hand cannon changes. These auto rifles, maybe scout rifles that are coming up next, aren't really going to be effective in trials. These are going to be for just normal gameplay for Iron Banner. If you're looking at it, we've got the... Bray Tech Werewolf comes back. Yeah, Bray Tech Werewolf. We've got the Ringing no. Nail. We've got the Tiger Spite, mm -hmm. the Ormond's Anvil, the Seventh Seraf Carbine, the Origin Story, uh, the Hazard of the Cast, the Origin Story was good. Prosecutor, yep. Shadow Price, and that's the Adept version as well. The Number, the Fire Fright, which I believe Destiny Fun Police pointed out this week. The one that's on the season pass on the free track. Keep a hold of that one for next season. I believe it has something like, uh, oh, I honestly can't remember off the top of my head now. Something like, like when people are close to you, that Ooh, it does more shadow damage. Shadow price, shadow price is a four fifty. Yeah, yeah, shadow price. It's, it's got threat detector and Adiago. That was it. Adagio. So Adagio. So when you get a kill, it slows down, but it does more damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shadow Price, Firefight, Positive Outlook, Uriel's Gift, the Jiangxi AR4, the Horror Story, the number, Uriel's Gift, Kobo, Yoshi, AR3. So yeah, you've got older versions of those as well that's still available. Very nice. So some of these auto rifles are coming back. Mm -hmm. I do love me some auto rifle in PvP. Parody loves some auto rifle in PvP. <laughs> 
Scout rifles. I, I'd be I'd be perfectly happy with an auto rifle meta again. Right. Um, at least at least for a season. Well, we don't want scout rifles to be too effective. <laughs> that that's not a problem. Uh, we generally don't want uh, long range weapons to complete with short range weapons for ease of use or time to kill. There is some room to make scout rifles a little better in PvP and add some primary weapon competition to snipers at longer ranges. So we've adjusted two of the scout rifle subfamilies, precision and high impact. Precision, that's the 180. Uh, mm -hmm. Increase the body damage from 34 to 38. That's a big jump. Mm -hmm. And crit moves from 54.4 to 60.8. That's also a big jump. Uh, can two crit two body against uh, 197 HP? Is that 10 resilience? How much is 197, guys? Isn't that max health? That's full health, isn't it? Health and shields. Yeah. Okay. Is it two, 210 is max? 210 is max. Okay, so this, this is a 10 resilience. I can't okay. remember now. I forgot my Fallout videos. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so at the, we direct you to Fallout plays for a refresher course. But almost everybody right now has 10 <laughs> resilience. The numbers so these numbers... Uh, I, I mean, it, it sounds more impressive than what it is because if everybody's rocking about 10 resilience because resilience actually matters this season, it's going to take more than this two and two. So don't yeah, get but let's face it. Let's face it. Nobody still runs 100% resilience in PvP. PvE activities, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but there yeah, you go. Two crit yeah, body yeah, against 197 on health. So I don't know what resilience that is. Y'all guys can figure that out. Um and kills are 1.33 uh, seconds and body shots against 190 HP or lower and is 1.76 seconds against higher resiliences. Oh, there you go. There you go. 1.67 seconds higher and resiliences. And your precision 180, 180 RPMs are the Tango 45 XK5094, which is sunset, but you can still pull it out. Hung Jury, SR4, Adept and the non-Adept version. Hung Jury. Oh, Vision of nice. Confluence, Time Lost and Normal. The Tango 45, the Near Harm's Frost, the Tears of Contrix Contraction, Contriction, that, the new one, basically. The Adverse <laughs> Possession mm -hmm. 9, The End, Call to Service, Tone Patrol, No Feelings, Nameless Midnight, Distance Relation, Royal Chase, Nameless Midnight again, Vision of Confluence again, Metronome At 52. least two of those that you've named, you can get box breathing. The Hung Jury especially. So the Hung Jury with box breathing is going to dramatically lower that TTK for that first shot. When you when, when you pop that first shot, it's going to take a lot more damage. So it's going to lower your overall TTK with that Hung Jury with box breathing. Uh, do I say a Metronome 52, the Oxygen SR3. The Staccato 46 and the original Hung Jura. Yeah. Those are your 180 RPMs. Please tell us what's happening with our high impacts. Uh, that's the 150 RPMs, and it increased the body damage from 38.2 to 42. That's almost four whole points. And the crit moves from 60, from 66.9 to 73.5. Goodness. It can two crit and one body against 189 HP or lower and kills in 1.6 seconds in body shots. And in list these, and I guarantee at least one of these can roll with box breathing too, which is really going to help. We have Frontier Justice, Pointed Inquiry, Garden Prodigy 1, to Telemac C, the Braytech RWP Mark II, legendary version, the Perseus D, Guiding Sight, Talons of the Eagle, does not compute the imperative. Callus Nobelest, that's an old one. Scholar and the Scholar Adept. Haunted Earth. Motion to Compel. Song of Justice 6. Good Council 9. The Cut and Run. Transfiguration. So Transfiguration's a good one because that's the one that when the last wish comes up it can roll with Rampage and Kill Clip on the same weapon. Ooh. The Dream. Guiding Sight. Uh, wrong side of right, and that's it. So there's your that's high impacts. So transfiguration, that's going to be a good one to look out for. And again, like I said, anything that can roll with box breathing, because damn. Uh, shotguns. Pellet shotguns felt like they could use some love in PVE. Uh, increased pellet. Increased pellet shotgun PVE damage bonus from ten to twenty five percent. 
I haven't got yeah, a list of shotguns because they've just all over the place. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, why would you use a shotgun now when you have a glaive? You know, honestly. No, I'm asking you too. Why would you use a shotgun over a glaive in PVE? When there's a bounty to get shotgun kills. Coming at me with the common I, sense. I don't need I've, common I've, sense. I need opinions. I've never really. I'm not really a shotgun user in PvP. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I don't really use either of them most of the time. But yeah, I. I've I used know, fusion rifles rare, and like side arms and We had the double guns. slugs that did the most boss damage, right? There was a rare instance, mm-hmm. but it's a slug, not a pellet. And then for the slug ones, you had the one-two punch combo, which kind of went out the window whenever they nerfed the hell out of the interaction between that and the hunter gauntlets. So that's not even really a thing anymore, right? So why would you ever choose a shotgun in PvE over a glaive? I don't think you would. A glaive gives you the same close-range lethality, and you also get a shield. And you can also get low range with the glaive, you know, much longer range than you can with a shotgun. So with the glaive being uh, in the game, there's no reason to use a shotgun in PvE unless that shotgun somehow really outperforms the glaive. You could throw your without remorse on with uh, incandescent and set everything on fire with your shotgun. I just got one of those. I have yet to test it. I'm super excited about that. It's really good. It's it's a lot of fun. Just walking into something and going, you want to be on fire? Do you want all your friends to be on fire? So yeah, I mean, incandescent as a perk is a reason, I guess. But yeah, it is. Too bad we can't get that on a glaive. That would be amazing too. <laughs> so uh, we have linear fusion rifles. The flinch increase on linear fusion rifles was fairly effective. Yeah, it was. But since it was a global, it hurt their usability in PVE. We've made a change that applies this increased flinch to damage coming only from players instead. Cool. So that's how they fixed the flinch. Um, yes, I also use the hammered box at close range too. Uh, glaives. When scavenger mods were disabled in PvP, glaives were no longer able to get enough ammo for a kill from a single break. We've corrected that issue. What are you trying to kill? Oh, in PvP. Okay, Guardians. Uh, increased ammo per special break from 1 to 2 in PvP. Damage scalers on the trace rifles. Killing tally, aggressor, and will given. Sorry, killing tally, aggressor, in will given form mode. Aggressor in will given form mode. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, but okay. Ariana's vow and oh, that's the secondary mode. I <laughs> Ariana's vow and fighting lion were not functioning as intended. The fix for this will restore that functionality for most weapons, but an update to Fighting Lion will come later. Currently planned for Season 18 launch. Note that this issue may also have affected other weapons and or perks. Killing Kelly's such a good perk. What that that says to me is that the Fighting Lion, they're going to leave because it's not prevalent. It takes some skill to use, but it is doing something it shouldn't be doing. So if it continues doing something it shouldn't be doing and it doesn't become a problem, they might leave it. That's what that says to me, that statement. What about you guys? Uh, yep. I actually don't know what I just read. <laughs> oh. yeah, it basically says, we're going to ignore this for now because it's not a huge issue. Yeah, We're going to fix it next season. However, if it becomes a huge issue, then maybe we'll fix it this season. So either don't use your fighting line and Bungie will let you use your broken fighting line this season or use it and put out big videos of it and make everybody use it and then they'll fix it immediately. I think I, I put a That's video in our links this. a couple of weeks ago with Destiny Fun Please going back over it no, and no, what no, it was. Sh- you shouldn't, okay. you shouldn't, no, you shouldn't do that. Shh. Let, let the people have their fighting line okay. fun. If you're good enough to be good with the stupid fighting line, more power to you. You enjoy the, the brokenness line. that it is. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty dumb you, with PvP. It's pretty- you and... You enjoy yourself. I have never been anywhere good with that weapon in any game type ever. So if you're okay with it, great. Enjoy yourself. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Cool. Exotics. Lorenz Driver is still impressive to play against. Yeah, it is. We wanted to see. So we wanted to address this more thoroughly. We've reduced the aim assist stat from 32 to 22. That's cool. That's that's actually very cool. 
because I've seen I've seen clips on YouTube where the reticule is off the head by the length of another head, and they still got the headshot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that that is not cool. <laughs> that is that is not cool. Uh, well, I mean, if you're the one that's being killed by it, in this game, right? Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, you're killed by it, your whole team getting killed by it. But, oh yeah, because there's that the AOE AI thing. Oh, by that it. sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also reduced suction against players. There you go. Remove the universal two times flinch nerve from the previous change. Since we've changed the flinch for all linear fusion rifles, see above. This change also applies to the arbalest. Oh yeah. Gallahorn is much too dominant as a heavy weapon choice in PvP and Gambit due to proximity detonation making it very easy to use. <laughs> if only somebody would have seen this coming. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we have the truth that they could have learned their lessons from. No, 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 I mean, le- no. it's not another or, game or the that they could have learned their lessons from. Yeah, right. That too. If only they had learned their lessons from the first time they brought the Gallahorn out, and that's all everybody used for anything ever. I'm honestly surprised it's taken this long for them to be like, listen, this is a problem. Yeah, we know. <laughs> We're very aware. <laughs> and Wolfpack rounds being able to finish Guardians who should be far enough away to be safe. I think that's so. what it is. That's the issue, isn't it? It's the Wolfpack. You hear that little tinkle and you're like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I'm dead. I'm, I'm so far away from mm-hmm. it, but I'm still dead. I'm on the other side of the map. Yeah. I've gone through a portal and it's still got me. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, I've... I I I spent uh, I I played a bunch of game a couple weeks ago and yeah just the number of times I die and I'm going he's already left the map he he wasn't even close to me when he was here and still died yeah it's ridiculous they will find you they will hunt you down so yeah sorry respawn what are they doing to it no 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 it's 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 fine because like I was getting flashbacks of the truth you know because it's fun to use like the wolfpack rounds might be a problem right but I love. The whole proximity, right? Because when you got that that a hole that invades you and just spends the whole time hiding behind something, I love shooting right over or right next to that thing, and the proximity kills them. Like, ha! <laughs> you know? I like that, but the the wolf pack rounds do sound like they're a problem. So they are. Um. Anyway, they're doing a thing. With the primary, primary rocket. rocket no longer has proximity. What? You should have left that there. Primary rocket. Wolfpack rounds now do a half damage to players. Okay, the Wolfpack, the Wolfpack rounds I get, but proximity is inherent in the missile. Yeah, but you're it's ruining the exotic no, no, again. No, this is for PvP no, and Gambit really only. Not. Still, just that's stupid. <laughs> Leave proximity alone. Proximity isn't the problem. The Wolfpack rounds are the problem, right? Because no, otherwise, I proximity I mean, look is at the truth. also truth the has problem. Three rounds in the chamber, and all of those have proximity and. And and chasing, you know. So did they do the same thing to the truth? So what I'm hearing is just use the truth instead. Then. There you go. But it's a stupid thing to take. Whatever. So that's what they're doing. Like it or leave it. Right. Response. The last word stress. has. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last word has reached the usage level on controller where it warranted some adjustment. <laughs> Again, Bungie. <laughs> there is another game. <laughs> that you made <laughs> that I remember we, we went through like peaks and troughs of this weapon you this could you, you, don't you could use it while time, while man. like zooming in you could just use it with hip fire we went backwards and forwards backwards and forwards with what we could actually do with this weapon you've done the same in Destiny 2 backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and oh it's like now with exception I've seen recently I don't know how true this is because I haven't been in PvP but I saw that my favorite gun in the world is actually yes, but we're not talking about your favorite gun in the world. Right we're not talking about your favorite gun in the world. We're talking about the last word. We're uh, talking about the last word. It's, it's been good for a while. Yes. And I understand. Uh, I understand. Bring the Galahorn back just to get people hooked to come back and play the thirtieth anniversary. I understand that we've gone through this so many times. We've spoken about it on this podcast so many times, just to oh, get yeah. people hooked to come back. You know, we've got the Whisper of the Worm. We've got this. We've got that. And I understand that, you know, we'll bring back some of the exotics from Destiny 1 to get people excited to come back and play it. But learn your lesson. But, oh, yeah. If you wanted to bring the Galahorn back, you should have put an expiration date on it. You should have said, if you buy the 30th anniversary pack, you can earn the Galahorn. 
the Gallahorn will be in the game for, you know, one calendar year, you know, whatever it is, one calendar year, you know, four seasons, three seasons, whatever. And then the Gallahorn leaves the game, you know, sun, you know, bring it back, but then sunset it sunset the individual weapon that you know is going to cause you nothing but problems looking you tell us so don't ever take my plus so i love you but you know exactly what's going to happen no you know, if you want to bring I, it back i, I don't want to hear put a, I don't, put a, I don't put a date on it. last night as a joke two of these idiots in the raid that was hilarious used telesto for dps and i did four million damage they did eight hundred thousand. no four <laughs> Four damage. <laughs> <laughs> Do not use Celesto and boss damage against roll. I honestly uh, haven't seen the last no, word be that prevalent no in PvP. And I mean, I've played a bit of PvP this season, and it's only through <laughs> watching. No. It, it's only through watching the YouTubers. I watched a video by Say Wallabra like last night, where he was using the Crimson, and what he in his video he from his community they'd all said that. It works fantastically well if you lower your FOV to 95 rather than 105. So he did. He played like two or three games at 95 opposed to 105 and found that using the Crimson mm. was so much better at a 95 field of view rather than 105 because where the, the weapon kicks up, you can actually still see the enemy in front of you and it was a lot easier to use. But he was going against this constant last word user that he knew that he couldn't just approach this guy. He had to kind of catch him off guard because it was just he was just so good with it because the weapon is just that good. So that's the only time I've actually seen the last word be so, you know, being used aggressively. But, but I guess it's it's mainly for kind of the the higher end of the PvP spectrum that they've found that it's an issue. Well, I mean, it's, it's got yeah. full auto, right? A standard yeah yeah and they they adjusted yeah, so it to be hit fire only and if it, it, it works it's got full auto it's got scaling damage for every round that hits so i mean it sounds like at shotgun range or a little bit further out you aim at a belly button and just let it ride up and kill whoever's chasing you done yeah you know but th so this, this guy that was going against say wallabra was really good with it i mean he knew that he couldn't even outclass him with a crimson and still kind of get his health back and fight this guy but it's, yeah but it's, anyway. it's just frustrating that it goes through so many different changes if you're a last word user i think you'd be so frustrated with the fact that they 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 go between like you you can use it like this or you can use it like this yeah. now it's going to be this uh, it's OP, gonna, now it sucks yeah. hey it's op again now it sucks hey it's op now it sucks hey it's op on controller but sucks on keyboard hey it's op on keyboard but now it sucks on controller yeah uh <laughs> Uh, so with this change, it will be a little harder to land crits while hip firing, and it will be less deadly at extended range. We have reduced; sorry, they have reduced hip fire precision aim angle by fifty percent. That is huge. Precision aim angle dictates how far off the head you can be aimed, and still have aim assist grant you a critical hit instead of a body shot. Reduced damage and aim assist fall off for distance, fall off distance by three meters. Forerunner. Isn't this a submachine gun? Nope. Sidearm. Right. Special nope. ammo sidearm. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, was getting three ammo per special brick in PvP. Technically enough for a kill, but this was unforgiving. We bumped it up a little at the same time. It was getting full ammo from a single special brick in PvE, which gave it an extremely high uptime. Uh, increased ammo per special brick from three to four in PvP. Reduced ammo per special brick from max to approximately 16 in PvE. A lot of people use Forerunner in PvE? I and guess so. I guess. There's a whole catalyst you need to get enough kills for. Apparently it's quite good if you use that on a hunter with the Mechaneer's oh, Trick Sleeves. In PvP. I've, mm. I've heard that, yeah. In PvP. Yeah, but again, PvP, that makes sense, right? Because, I mean, y'all saw how I used it in PvP against Guardian Downcast. Yeah, I called you guys out. Uh huh. Um, you, you don't play PvP. I did against them. <laughs> Go back and watch the video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Arian as well was getting uh, one ammo per special brick in PvP. Not enough for a kill. Increased ammo per special brick from one to two in PvP. Again, that's not forgiving either, though, right? So you're just talking about how giving exactly enough for a kill is unforgiving. No, not runner. enough for a kill. He does exactly that Ariana's. for the Ariana's foul. Yeah, but not, it's not enough for a kill. 
No, no, that's what I'm saying. Though. They gave it two bricks, which is enough, which is exactly enough for a kill. Yeah. Right. But they just said doing that for Forerunner, three ammo is technically enough for a kill, but it was unforgiving. You did the exact same thing to Ariana's Val. You made yeah, it. Ariana's Val is the, the sniper hand kill. cannon. So is Forerunner. No, you're looking at hand cannon as opposed to sidearm here. Okay. Still sniper level. No. Okay. No, it's not. It is. It's not. It is. Dude, it, Forerunner is a sniper sidearm. I know this from experience. Right. But it, it's not a sniper sidearm in comparison to Ariano's Val, which is a sniper hand cannon. Okay. So, we're evaluating the airborne effectiveness stat on exotic weapons, keeping in mind that they can't equip the Icarus script mod and decided to bump several up to be more competitive. Soros Regime goes from 23 to 31. Whisper of the Worm goes from 9 to 20. Why would you make a sniper that good in the air? Good lord. It's, and who, who's out there with it's the It's a heavy weapon. It's, it's not going to be item. used. Don't worry. Yeah, no, fair enough. But right. Why? That, it, that just leads even more. Why? <laughs> it, it seems like a weird thing to call out at all. Like, who's who's out there well, getting if, their... The you thing know, is, no if they didn't tell you what it was, people would be upset. So at least they're telling you what well, they're Why gonna... just that? There's How many how many exotic snipers? Are... The cloud, the, the, the cloud room with the lightning strikes. That's not that really... would have been better to yeah, get that. Yeah, that's not a heavy one. But, 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 what? Why does it have to be heavy? But that's what it is. That's the, that's the one that they're adjusting. <laughs> Maybe but they don't okay. need to trust the other one. It's so asinine. Monte Carlo from 21 to 29. Good. And the Forerunner from 22 to 27. Good. Okay. Uh, approved. Bungie approved. Stamped. Approved here at Two Titans. <laughs> I didn't say anything about approved. No, it's not approved. Oh, that's why no. I said just the Two Titans. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, we're, we're, we're not jumping or getting sniper shots in the air anyway, Neither am so I, fine. but it's just... Why? It's not approved. The Whisper of the Worm, of all things, like you said, is a heavy. Is a sniper. Nobody uses it to begin with. Why even address it, much less adjust well, it? Pr- well, I mean, probably because 9 was just... I mean, what did you say last week or week before? You needed like 60 for it to be like viable in airborne efficiency or something. So probably at a base of nine, it was like, it was probably one of those, whatever you do, you cannot get it to a point where it's even useful. So probably the bump to 20 is like, okay, you can actually at least spec into this now to make it useful. Again, I'm not saying I'm going to, but I'm saying nine seems just like way too low to even have a chance of being a useful weapon at all yeah so it, it needs to at least be an option i not address the darcy if they're going to address the heavies right they left the darcy out you know well well, well yeah well right but what does the darcy spec though like what what is the number like yeah. you know is it is it more than nine <laughs> and respawn i think you're forgetting that sometimes these notes that they put in the twabs aren't the full patch notes sometimes that when the full patch notes do come out of when they're actually going to do it and i don't think they've actually given us a date it's just coming before season 18 so hopefully in the next two to three weeks this will be out that's because right. again that's really strange that they haven't given us a date but normally when when they do actually drop it sometimes there are additions that they put in the patch notes oh yeah almost all the yeah. time there, there, there's always extra stuff that they don't tease ahead of time yeah right. sometimes it's a lot sometimes it's a little but yeah yeah i mean this is this is in no means is this the the whole thing. This is just whatever they felt important enough to tell us about, you know, to pre warn us about and let people get pre about or pre happy about before they drop the full notes. And again, to my demon's point, whenever this actually goes live, because yeah, there's no date on any of this. It's just sometimes like, it's really infuriating. Maybe, I wish they color coded it, but when it actually does come out, they highlight it with like mm-hmm. red to say that we've already shown you this in a twelve. And these are the things that you do because otherwise it takes parody and I ages to go back through it and go. We, we know that we've spoken about this. We know we've spoken... Well, we've got to tell somebody about this one because we're va- like 50% sure that we haven't spoken about this. So it would be handy to say, these are the things we've already discussed in the TWAB. These are the additional things that we haven't told you about that are actually in the new patch notes. So maybe consider that, Bungie. And Bungie it'd be, color code. It, yeah, it'd be nice to color code things that, like when they actually get released because you'll have... Here's here's the things happening this season. Here's the things happening next season. Here's the things happening sometime six years from now. But we're going to tell you about today, just because we can. And then you're going to wait. What changes are actually coming? Like what? Like what is actually in this game that I'm meant to play? Right. 
what 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 copy of this am I actually supposed to pay attention to? Yeah. So if you are worrying what's coming up, we've got Grandmasters next week, so 5th of July. 12th of July, we've got the next Iron Banner, so just pre warning you for that. And then the week after Iron Banner, we have this Solstice event, which hopefully, I'm guessing next week, we might have a preview for it. But it possibly the week of Iron Banner, they might go into some detail about how that's going to work and the bonfire bash and how you're going to get different triumphs and things and how you can earn the... the there's the new challenges, isn't there? They were going to do new triumphs that you could you have to do the different events each season. Do you remember that? So to get different seals and then to do uh, to get a, a gilding yep. of the seal, you'd have to do that. So hopefully they'll go into a bit more detail in the next couple of weeks of those. So that's why I, th- I suppose they're quite light on twabs for the next week or so. So, or they'll just drop drop us drop it on us and go here it is figure it yep. out. I mean, I, I again. I mean, I could go back and look at the notes over the last couple of weeks and say, right, say the last over the last couple of years that we've done this and go, well, this is how it used to play, so it could potentially be the same. But normally, what I found is that even like chess locations and the way that the game mode plays in the EAZ also change slightly. And it's not until you get into about two or three weeks into it where people go, ah, oh, well, this is the new location. Or no, this is the new way that we do these things. So. I can be proactive, but unfortunately, sometimes Bungie <laughs> change things up and, and mix things up. Right. Changes everything. And you're like, all right, I've looked this up and now it's completely mm-hmm. different. So, yeah, that's what's coming in the next couple of weeks. But not not the weapon changes as yet. Possibly for Solstice. Maybe they'll do it with the Solstice. Maybe that's the thing that when the Solstice drops, there will be a, a big kind of downtime. All these changes are going to affect and we'll have Solstice. So there'll be more bugs, and there'll be solstice with bugs. Just, just prepare mm-hmm. yourself. It seems sort of weird, just like to sort of drop these, what feels like sort of in the middle of nowhere. It's like, hey, here's a bunch of changes we're making. When? Uh, we're not sure yet. We'll, we'll, we'll get around to it. We'll let you know later. Yeah. Just seems seems like a it seems like weird timing. Well, maybe they're not sure. Maybe they're like we're we're thinking about doing it with solstice, but if we do it with solstice, maybe it's going to cause more issues. Maybe they'll do it the week of Iron Banner, which mm-hmm. is the the twelfth. So maybe next week they'll go. Oh, by the way, this is going live just before Iron Banner, so that we've got a week. You no, know, to... on the seventh, which is in seven days, six days, five days. What's that? Four days. The seventh. You know, Bungie day. day. Bungie day. No, they won't do it on Bungie day. They always do it on a, a, a no, Tuesday no, no. before I'm not reset. About, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. I wish. You wish. Upon a star. Upon a star. That they would announce that they would SLR announce. coming back on Bungie Day. Because they said something big is coming on Bungie Day, but they didn't want to tell us. Right? Serial Racing Week? Serial Racing League, yes. SRL? Yeah. Imagine if they announced it was coming. Maybe not maybe not this season, but next season. If they if they at least mentioned that, hey, we've heard your cries. Well, we're working. Speaking of this, right, I, I was thinking about this in the last week or so, that... There's been so many issues, hasn't there, about new players coming into the game of of Destiny and not understanding what's come before. I mean, we've lost quite a lot. We've lost the Red War. We've lost the Forsaken stuff. So people don't know, like, the backstory of Callus. They don't know the backstory of Keitel. They don't know, like, this whole Red War, us losing our light. The the initial uh, opening of Destiny 2, we then, they don't know about the losing of one of the Vanguard, Cade, being killed and that kind of whole storyline kind of then moving into the crow that's all kind of been lost and i was thinking they, they, they're they struggling Bungie are always kind of struggling of how to get new guardians into it how to get people into the story and we've got this whole thing with shorhan and this is how you get into the game we've had to bring back the cosmodrome into destiny 2 there's a content vault that we sometimes bring things in or out of but what i think Bungie are forgetting about and i haven't heard them mention it is that they still have another game. They have Destiny. They still have it there. What about making that a free-to-play game? Why not free-to-play, update it with better graphics, or do whatever so that, say, this is your introduction to the Destiny universe and encompass it into Destiny 2. Just to have it, just call it Destiny in the end. Maybe there's some issues with Activision because it may still be fall under the Activision license thing. 
but they still maintain the servers for those. They still have PvP, they still have PvE. That is all kind of still going. Because when they have downtime for Destiny 2, sometimes there is downtime for Destiny 1. So it, it's they're still mm -hmm. running those things. And surely that takes up a lot of the, the space that they could potentially be using to make Destiny 2 a bigger game and maybe some of the reason why we have this Destiny content vault. And it would make sense of, right, you go and play this game and this will introduce you to the Vanguard, it will introduce you to PvP, it will introduce you to the story elements of the large universe, you can then move that into Destiny 2 and follow on the story. That way they could potentially still open up a, a Red War campaign, they could open up the Forsaken and just link it all together. What do you guys think? Or am I just... Uh, just? I think that would be fine, but the caveat is at the end of that free-to-play, that Destiny 1, they would have to show the cutscenes of the important things. They'd have to show the cutscene of K dying. They'd have to show the cutscene of our life being stolen by what's his face, Goal. right? Yeah, they'd have to show all the important storyline cutscenes. What led up to that? Because D one, D one, Kate is alive and happy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. End, it's right? still there. And now they come into they come into D two where they are right now, and they're like, "Where's that Kate guy at? You know, I liked him. He was funny. Where did he go? Right? They have no idea. He was killed by by Crow." And 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 the crow, right? Even if you listen to all the audio, the crow just says, "For my past crimes, I'm not him. I didn't do this. You know, I've 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 paid for what I've done." This is, he say he says a lot, alluding to the Cade death, but there's nothing that specifies the Cade death. So these new guys aren't going to know what he's being punished for. Yeah, right. Why everybody hates him? Nobody nobody knows. I know what you know. Uh, Bungie seem to worry about kind of trying to piece the beginning of Destiny two together and and try and catch people up with that but they have this other game that could catch people up to say right this is exactly what's this and maybe like you said do like little cut scenes and intertwine it with the ghost telling us what happened what we did in between to kind of get you into destiny 2 or just make destiny 1 the introductory part of the whole destiny universe i agree as long as they do something to build the gap you know yeah which which would be nice i and sort of to your point like you know he, here's like sort of a series of cutscenes. This is a perfect place for, I mean, if not a movie put together like an animated, you know, take these cutscenes, sort of, you know, build them out into sort of like a, you know, like a mini movie, sort of like, you know, you know, like you have the seasonal recaps. Hey, you know, you don't remember what happened in the first three seasons of stranger things. Here's the recap of to get you sort of caught up and remember yeah. what happened. Do something, you know, maybe you know a little more in depth than that of from the perspective of maybe, you know, some of these names, but you don't know, you know, you haven't been here since 2014 and don't know all the ins and outs, but here, you know, here's, here's your little like recap video, recap movie of what's going on in the story and the big story beats and just who these main players are, you know, and focusing maybe a little bit more on who's, you know, who's in the game at this point and where, you know, where we're going to drop you in, in destiny Two, but at least give you a little bit of that. Yeah. That, that understanding and just in, and teaching people because, because I've seen a lot of discussion about, yeah, the, the story this week about, yeah, you know, we, we lost this whole great campaign and a lot of this story, but also just some of the mechanics, like just teaching you how to play the game. There's a lot of mechanics that as a veteran player, you go, oh, I know what to do with this because I've seen this yeah. before. But there's absolutely nothing in the game to explain to you, oh, you have to shoot this thing. Oh, you have to pick up this ball and put it over here. Oh, you have to do X, Y, and Z. My, like there's just my, my no explanation of those mechanics. That, that'll help that out. And they should they should put this somewhere in Destiny, right? My kid, we were trying to figure something out, and I can't remember what it was, but he said something profound that to this day, it sticks with me, right? He goes, if you can't figure out what you got to do, shoot it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. and, and in Destiny, that's exactly what happened. It's a very cave thing out what to you say. Do, shoot it. You can't, you know, it says, hey, you know, do something in this general area where there's like a computer and you can't interact with the computer, shoot it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All that fails shoot it and nine times out of ten that's what you needed to do you know i think <laughs> use use the tools available to you the gun the fist the grenade the rocket i think the reason why i was thinking about this is i was going through my hard drive and i was kind of like well i've got halo infinite on it's, it's two different save things it's like one is the pvp and one is the pve and it's the same game it's not all encompassed in one download there, there are these two things and i was thinking well bungie have these mm -hmm. two things 
either make Destiny 1 upgraded, you know, better graphics and things. That way you don't necessarily need the Vault of Glass in Destiny 2. You could have upgraded Destiny 1 and go, right, you have to play this side of the game to go and play X, you know, activity in there. You can go and play the updated Vault of Glass. You can get the new weapons. You can get the new loot. And it, it's portable from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, which is what you can still do now. You can still go to Destiny 1, you can create your character, you can play Destiny 1, and then when you are ready, you can import that character to Destiny 2 as a saved character across the, the, the game. So either turn Destiny 1 off to save space and then reopen it up into like the Destiny Content Vault, so you've got that space that you were using for Destiny 1 to then be able to kind of select parts from Destiny 1 which would then get people into the game and show you the story so destiny one could then or destiny as it could be known as could be the point of it opens the game you see from destiny one you go through you can play those raids and then it takes you into destiny two you can play the, the red war and things surely that way if they shut down the game and then just reopen it up as part of destiny like what they have been doing you know we, this is part of the content vault it's going in in this game but it's still over in that game just it doesn't make any sense to me is that they're, they're running like servers with a, a vault of glass over here and a vault of glass over here. If, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wonder for a while, like how long, like what's destiny one's lifespan? Like how long is this game going to be around and viable and playable? How many people are over there still playing that game? Cause yeah, I mean, to say nothing of the, you know, just the, the physical, the technological resources of server space and bandwidth and blah, blah, blah. You're you're supporting this game. You're continuing again. You know, to your point, they'll say, "Hey, both both destinies are down for maintenance because we're doing maintenance." Uh, you know, how many people? Obviously, it's probably not a big team at this point, but like, how many people? Their full or part time job is to maintain Destiny One and to make sure it continues to work and run. And well, function you have you have like and why you have multiple versions of it. You have the Destiny One that is 360 and PlayStation Three, which cuts off. I believe just before Rise of Iron, that is still playable. You then have mm. the original Destiny 1, which was available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, when that first came out, which then goes to the like the past Rise of Iron and, and the kind of moments of triumph, that kind of thing, and cuts off before it goes to the Red War. So you've got all these iterations of Destiny that they are still running on all these other platforms. Now, surely it makes sense to make it a free-to-play game like they have done with Destiny 2 and then just encompass some things across to make it one big whole Destiny? No? That sounds like a whole lot of work and nothing to pay for. Well, at the moment, who's going out and buying Destiny 1? Not a lot of people. Right, but, but, but like, is it a whole lot of work up front to save yourself a whole lot of work in the long term? You know, I mean, you're again, you're still paying to keep Destiny yeah. 1 up and running. You're still paying not just, you know, the physical resources, but, you know, the people to keep this game working. Are there that many people playing D1 at this point? And some, I mean, I mean, and to be fair, you know, they just turned off like what, you know, the old, the old servers were like Halo 3 stats or something. So, I mean, clearly there's, there's, you know, some decree of keeping this stuff around and up and running for as long as possible. But, and I know that, and I know Halo is not Bungie anymore, but I think, but I think it was Bungie who turned off, you know, some of the old server stuff like earlier this year for a, ancient game they no longer own or run so it's just like but like you know at what yeah like at what point is the investment in destiny just not worth the investment anymore and and, and yeah and i had totally forgotten about you know the ps3 plays era xbox 360 crowd that can still play the game that way i mean that's that's at least an argument for keeping it going but yeah it's it's like it's like at one point do you just sort of say okay this is old enough now let's move on but I also know if you're one of the people playing it every day going, no, no, I love playing it on my old 360. You know, don't take this thing away that I've paid you for and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, but yeah, at, at some no point answer, you, but yeah. you get Call of Duty. They shut down the servers for the, their games as they continue to iterate each throughout the year. And you only have access to like the like the PVE part of it. You know, you, you can't access the PVP mm -hmm. part. So, right. you know... I just see that they they've got all these they've got all these balls in the air basically they're juggling all these balls for this one massive IP that they've got that they could consolidate. I mean, 
yeah, like I said, they've got two Vault of Glasses running in, and you could play them on the same platform. I can boot up my my Xbox One and still play Destiny One. Go to the Vault of Glass in one area, and then boot up Destiny Two and play the Vault of Glass in a different area. And it makes no sense that just mm-hmm. bring it all together in one big right. game. And, and I think maybe and maybe you hit part of the nail on the head is they're one IP, they're one game because Bun- Bungie has had one game. You know, I mean, Destiny, Destiny Two, two different games technically, but you know, basically one one big IP. And now with them starting to work on other things, maybe this is where you know obviously they're doing they're hiring like crazy, but you know maybe some of that math comes into play or resources. They go, why are we continuing to support this game forever? You know, once they have new IPs in the space, maybe maybe that's when they start going. So why are we hanging on to this forever? Maybe it's time to start. I mean, maybe some next moves. year might be. I don't know. Uh, or the, like the next couple of years, because well, they have that other game in the works too with that other company. They do. Well, not the other company. So maybe when that comes close to being released, that at that point they'll be like, "All right, you know, we don't need D one up anymore. It's it's had a good well, no, eight th- year run. I think, it's time to retire." I think they do. They still D one is kind of still kind of part of the game. There is still there are still elements of that game that you know, like like well, you just said. said SR, somebody said. SR, SR, somebody SR. said what to do about that is you know how we have kiosks in D two, right? Put all the major starting, put all the major cutscenes from D1 into the kiosk in Destiny 2. And that way people can go back and separate it by, you know, DLC or whatever, in order, chronologically speaking. And they can watch all the cutscenes from D1, if D1 is no longer running, in D2. So you can see, oh, hey, there's this kid guy. Oh, he looks pretty funny. Holy crap, they killed him. It was Crow. <gasps> you! Right? So, you know, I mean, they would still have all the knowledge that we do, but it's in a kiosk that they can choose to go watch. You know, maybe Budgie even encourages, hey, here's everything that happened in D1 and D2 up to the point that you're at, if you care about storyline stuff. Boom. Done. Love the idea, but for the love of God, don't put it in the game. Put put it on YouTube. Put, put it somewhere where I can go watch it at my leisure on my big screen TV that I don't have to boot into the game to go watch it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that but makes yes. sense. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it somewhere for me to go watch it. Yeah, put it you, on Bungie. Don't have to put click on YouTube, watch whatever. You, know. you could just ignore that button and just leave it. <laughs> right, but nobody wants to watch things in game. Nobody, come on now. I mean, we, it, we have he's right that it's going to it's take up a lot of game <laughs> memory, game space, and game it, this, game that. Yeah, and, 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 and say it's just one more thing you then have to <laughs> keep tapped on in your game that you're already like, there's too many things in this game. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Anyway. It's got a point. Not, not that that's gonna. You I mean, know, drive up your files. Maybe, maybe much, it's but, because they had the deal with Activision that maybe twenty twenty four Destiny One then becomes solely the property of Bungie, and they can then do with it as they want. But or twenty twenty four. That's the end of the ten game ten years. They said they would support this game for possibly. They, they said this is a ten year game. Yeah. So maybe ah. at, at ten years. That maybe they say hey. 2014 to 2024 that's the 10 year cycle the story of destiny has come to an end and at this point destiny as an original is its time is over destiny 2 will live on as whatever its next chapter is going to be but maybe that's where destiny comes to a stop speaking of cycles did you know that prime gaming has cycles they do did you know that didn't they did didn't and in fact in in what regard well because they have cycles motorcycles yes yes in the form of sparrows they have digital cycles they they cycle in um new gear as an old gear right and in this particular instance they have three exotics that you can get if you have prime game right some of you may remember back in the day way early in destiny one where you could only swap out one of your emotes and the other three remained the same now in Destiny 2, we get to have all four emotes all at once. And honestly, this month's Prime Gaming mic drop is going to fit perfectly with the others. Don't know what I'm talking about? Well, here's a quick summary. Sign up for Prime Gaming, link your Bungie.net account, and get the sweet cosmetics listed below. With more rewards coming in future months. Seems simple, right? Well, it is. Lined up for this month, we have a clean sparrow, a ship, and a ghost. And the best mic drop you've seen this side of the tower. Yeah, they, I, I can't see what the names are. <laughs> I'm looking. This is a pretty good mic drop. 
No, well, the, the emote is mic drop, and it is exactly what it sounds like. You're dropping a mic. The sparrow and the ghost and the ship, it's not giving me the names for you, even when I click on it. The Canopus, Canopus shell exotic ghost. There you go. Looks like a big volleyball ball thing. With a toe hitch. Your clean, yep. clean sweep exotic sparrow. And your quantum cartographer legendary ship. Da, 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 da. Which looks like a, every other ship that they have reskinned. It's the sleek, sleek, uh, I can't remember what the name of the real life plane is, but yeah, it's there. It's so, you know, yeah, all, all truly cosmetics, no, no weapons, no ornaments, just, uh, yeah, that's your prime gaming for the, for the month. But yeah, it's, it's worth signing up for because, yeah, they do, they, they will put, they will put actual, like, you know, exotic weapons and other things in there. So it's worth, it's worth signing up for it. Even if you don't, if you don't claim them all, it's worth at least having the option to do so. I believe the mic drop wasn't that from year one. I have no idea. It's old. I know it's, that. It's, it's a very old, old one that I don't think has come back up for a very long time in the Eververse store. So. It came out while Obama was president, I think. So Possibly Clinton, if, actually. If Bungie would let me sort my emotes in any useful way, I would be able to tell you this. But <laughs> all, I, all I know is I have like 87 pages of emotes and I have no idea when they came out. Mm. But I have them all. You have them all. You got to catch them all. Now, now and now I'm not sure if I can if I can support going outside because Bungie feels like they want us to go outside to to, to a park. That, that doesn't seem like a thing in, in this economy in this heat. That, no, I, I don't know. But Bungie's talking about Pride at the Park 2022, and uh, their stri- Pride strike team got together to plan our Pride Month events. That became clear they needed an event that not only represented the culture of stronger together, but also represented Bungie's commitment to Pride in the community. So a handful of cross-disciplinary members of the Pride Strike team got together and quickly assembled a fun event in Bellevue Square Park with catered food, games, and most importantly, bungee people. Sorry, no. Bungie, no bungee, 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 bungee. So you said food, games, and then most importantly, bungee people. I would say games, bungee people, and most importantly, food. I mean, we're gamers here, right? Food is... I mean, as long as the food was good... Yeah, but we're gamers, and, and we want we want access to that sweet, sweet bungee people. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a good event in the park. Um, they've got the, the Pride, Pride logo emblem thing again, ML3, FD4, ND9, which I'm pretty sure they've put in the last mm-hmm. couple of TWABs. Mm-hmm. So if you've not claimed it yet for some reason, go claim it, add it to your collection. Or I think, like Nate even said, this is the one they had last yes. year as well, so you may have previously claimed it. Yes. So yeah, they had a nice day at the park. So yes, if you were in, I guess, near Bellevue, Washington, you could go be in the park. The rest of us uh, just get to know that they had a park event and does us no good at all. Speaking so. of last year, I got an update. That raid jacket that we got, or we, um, yeah, we got <laughs> it before you. The raid jacket that I ordered, yeah. it's it's gonna be here in September. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Is that is that because you were able to see the, in the respawn report roundup that uh, Bungie's put. Put updates to their shipping things? No, no, they sent mm-hmm. me an email. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that. Oh, don't be silly. He doesn't read his respawns report good. roundup before he gets to the respawns report roundup. Yeah, that's duh. That's well, I don't want to spoil myself. That doesn't make any sense. And and as and as the prophecy foretold, speaking of, of last year and earlier in the sh- in the show th- six hours ago, Grandmaster Nightfalls are returning next week. So yeah, uh, finish your conqueror title. Build your conqueror title, start your conqueror title, and it would be really handy. Uh, yeah, so they if are they back. Told you how high a light Allegedly. you need to be to get into them. No, no, but guess they, they will tell you that if you get error coded out of a non match main night level, you'll automatically rejoin after logging back in, unless your team has finished the nightfall. I assume while you were not there, and then you get none of the loot. So, Ooh-wee. there's that. Um, you won't be able to change your build or equipment um, in the app or third party websites, but good luck. We're not going to tell you any of the requirements, but they come back. Theoretically, there will be a node you can access in the in the Vanguard area for for the for the Grandmasters. Theoretically, it'll actually work and let you go in. I feel like the, it was this point last season they were like, "You can ha- can have these," and I was like, "My game doesn't." So, well, I believe uh, you yeah. have to be fifteen eighty five. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you have to be fifteen eighty five because it's normally you have to get to the power cap plus fifteen on your artifact or. 25 on your artifact whichever way you want to do it that's normally are you kidding me seriously well last last season it was 1575 and we've only gone up 10 light so um, that's why i thought i was was thinking i was like 
1984, but you're telling me right now I'm not even high enough. I'm one light short. Sure. But you're all of my gear for a is 1570. All of my gear is 1570, and I'm still not high enough. To get it. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, whatever. That's why it's an, it's an aspirational goal for aspirational okay. uh, night falling to then aspirationally get absolutely destroyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and aspiration will do bounties until your freaking artifact is high enough. Exactly. All right. Uh, Grandmasters, you were already reading that. He's done that, yeah. And he's going to move straight into his player support report. I will. I do. I was trying to look and see if I could if I could quickly find the numbers for Grandmaster, but not from any sort of official source. So No, go with me. Yeah, I'm official. So, uh, I'm officially telling you. 1585. That's, that, that's true. I don't know why I would ever doubt you. So, yeah. My, my team is telling you. There you go. Now you know. And knowing it's half the battle. The other half of the battle is, Gee, as yeah, Response said, know. assembling. No, no, it's assembling a team. So then you can go in with your team and actually have success once you've, once you've <laughs> waged the battle. Communication. I can't tell you how many people expect to go into a Nightfall Grandmaster without mics. Oh my god. Sorry, continue. We have a report from the player support people. They support the players. I feel supported. You feel supported. We should all feel supported. Very. And uh, the Vanguard has pretty pretty okay mental health coverage, all things considered. So, you know, if, you, if you've been on the fence about joining the Vanguard and just living in the last city, you know, sweeping the floors, maybe join the Vanguard. You know, there's, there's excitement and uh, health coverage. Don't take bot shop. Take super bot shop. Mm-mm. No, no. Sw- Sweeper bot can have many jobs. He needs help. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, this is this is their report. They have one. It's exciting. We have emblems. Your G- GCX charity emblem distribution. Uh, earlier this week, they were given to players who donated to the GCX St. Jude charity celebration. If you donated, you have an emblem. It's in your collections, flair, and general area. So enjoy that there. You should also see it there because it's flashing that something else is in that collection that you don't know what it is. So no, that's it why it's flashing. Really flash, actually. If they add a new banner or whatever emblem, ooh, it doesn't normally ooh, flash. If they just you sneak have to go it in hunt there. for it. Oh, fancy! Well, well, there you go. Collections, Flare General. Now you can hunt for it. And you put it on if you're so inclined. Um, known issues because yes, there are. Uh, your investigator and gumshoe rare armor sets are incorrectly appearing as available to unlock in the armor synthesis when not yet acquired in collections. The Arc Siphon does not successfully count as an Arc mod for activating secondary perks on an Arc charge with light mods. That's irritating because I think I was, uh, I think I had that on something. That's irritating to me. The dialogue for Nessus Patrols may not successfully play on patrol activation. So, no stories, just, just slaughter. Rahul displays incorrect error messages when attempting to acquire certain items with a full inventory. So, before you go see Rahul, Make sure you have empty slots and everything so you can actually pick things up because he might tell you all sorts of things like the cat's out of the bag and you won't know what that means. Players who haven't picked up their prime gaming items from Amanda's holiday... From a, <clears throat> try this again. Amanda is not on holiday. Players who haven't picked up their prime gaming items from Amanda Holiday's inventory for several drops can't view her inventory anymore. That's you, Parody. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's I, I feel I feel targeted. I feel seen. <laughs> it's, um, right. it's, it's it's just an issue. Uh, they with... know it's an issue, and they will yeah, get to I... it. You're not going to go and look at them anyway. Uh, n- <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I mean, to, to, to be clear, I I do go sometimes visit her team just to see how many exotic weapons are sitting there, and just to sort of confirm they're still there. But no, I'm I'm not going to pick any. Now, if they said that so. you've lost all they of your there prime gaming, there forever. that would be triggering for you. Um, no, not really, because I got them all for free anyway, so, and I've let them sit there yeah. for seasons no, and seasons. Well, it was your so, fault you left them there uh, for the, season after season. There's still literally a chaperone from the first time you get the chaperone on my Same. hunting season in Amanda Holiday. <laughs> so, I, again, I, even if they, they were to disappear, I really can't be too disappointed about it. But yeah, so, if you've been using Amanda as that extra, extra storage space, um, no, you're not, because they might not actually be visible. They're not gone, they're just not visible. And so that's what's broken in the game. And uh, while we're not going to talk about Bruno, I will tell you what Bruno told us earlier this week, because there was a hotfix for 104 that Bungie put into the game to, you know, to fix a handful of things. Um, fix an issue where the mods weren't dropping in Last Wish. Uh, your duality fix an issue where the damage phase lasted for an unintended duration in a Sorrow Bearer encounter. 
Also, the Sorrow Bearer could auto-complete after the first bell teleport. <laughs> and uh, the Skyburner's Oath and Explosive Payload Perk could bypass the boss's shields in the Duality Vault encounter. So I've been using those. Um, no, you're not anymore. Fix an issue where the players could break the immune shields in Vault of Glass, Garden of Salvation, and Valve the Disciple by applying Scorch to enemies. So you can Scorch them, but you're not going to get through their shields. It's easy. And for Night Demon specifically, they fixed an issue where players could could hide out of bounds in the Crucible Baptist Junction. And they fixed an issue where the Heavy S Death Emblem was not contributing towards the Reputation Rank Boost when equipped. And where the fifth step in the Forging the Iron Quest would not progress if the equipped Iron Banner Armor also had Ar Iron Banner Ornaments applied. And an issue where the Daily Challenges Rank Boots, Daily Challenges Rank Boost increments were not unlocked account wide. So a couple of Iron Banner fixes for you before Iron Banner drops again. I don't care. Done it. Done it. Done and it. And because done. we're going. I'm an Iron Lord. I'm, I'm three times Iron Lord. That's it. Done it. Until next time. But this is but this is still for you. They've also fixed for well, you. My followers. You particularly. My Iron followers. And Andy. Yeah. For your, for, for your Iron Banner wolves following you around. The issue where the. um, When dumping the spark with no time left on the, ra on the round counter could trigger an infinite transmat loop. Uh, they fixed that. <laughs> and the issue where the spark would just flat out disappear for the remainder of the match if the player that picks it up dies at the same time. They fixed that too. So hopefully your Iron Banner Rift will be a little uh, a little riftier, a little less standing in an infinite loop thing or dancing with the other team because there's no way to actually pick up the spark because it's gone for it. Kate Six Curse, he's just stuck in the, in the Vex teleporter sequence. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wasn't a bug. It's just a shout out to Kate. That's all. Right. Uh, the Conflux Law Sector wasn't available in its Legend or Master version for some players. That's been resolved. The, bar the Bound by Sorrow quest would not complete upon co collecting 500 vestiges. Fix that one too. Um, we've already talked about all the armor things they've done about the airborne effectiveness. Uh, they fixed the issues where the players could shoot through Barricade, Ward of Dawn, and Thin Walls when both the Piercing Sidearm Artifact mod was equipped with the weapons Armor Piercing Around Weapon perk. So the piercing sidearms artifact mod has been re-enabled. So if you weren't able to pick it up, or you're trying to you're trying to finish your artifact by getting up all the mods, now it should be available to you. I did also see a bug where sometimes you couldn't pick up the sidearm uh, artifact mod, or when you picked it up, you still weren't getting credit for having all the mods. And if that's the case, you need to reset your artifact and pick them all back up. That will trigger the yeah. I've, the I've got that one. It, it says I haven't unlocked the first any time. mods. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's silly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Reset your artifact, and uh, then it should work. For but you. I don't want to because that's going to cost me glimmer, and I've worked hard for that glimmer. You do it. You, you do it. You've got plenty of glimmer. It's fine. You do it your end. Uh, they've also fixed an issue where the Nezarex uh, Whisper Glaive couldn't be masterworked in some cases. And then here's a long one that that is going to make somebody upset or angry. They fixed an issue where the Hammer Strike was not receiving the intended damage bonus from Roaring Flames. In patch 4102, we fixed an issue where the Roaring Flames was not getting the intended reduced scalers while melee boosting exotic armor or weapon perks were active, but that change was not reflected in the release's patch notes, so we're including it here for posterity. So this change took effect two patches ago, 4102, but they're putting it into the 4104 notes because Somebody they just forgot, forgot to, to put it into those notes. And documentation is important. So this has been in the live in the game as of today, as of two patches ago, two weeks ago, your Roaring Flames will now grant you, well, Roaring Flames grants you a 20% damage bonus on powered melee abilities per stack, and it will grant 10% bonus damage per stack if you're using the Syntheseps, Peregrine Greaves, Worm God's Caress, or the one-two punch weapon per active. So yeah, not a change, has been in the game, just wasn't called out. And if you have potential photosensitivity issues, the Crucible Vermilion Shader visuals, uh, they resolved that, so you should hopefully have less issues. And that's what's, what was in 4104 that came out uh, Thursday Thank of this week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bruno. And now we have some movies and videos and then Art of the Week, which maybe one, maybe are going to get disqualified halfway through. There's really no you've way to, to know. You've got to wait until Bungie you know, have sent you the emblem. But even then... They can still take it away. Is, so is it time for you? There. I guess it is. 
do, 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 do. we have the report round up o'clock do, 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 do. so here's what they were talking about that i saw i did not see this because my email said exactly you'll expect it in september yay and i have bots in my chat you um so basically the things that you got in 2021 so the moments of triumph 2021 t-shirt which queen legendary uh palladium pal shock boots files of disciple raid jacket vidmaster seal blah 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 all that is still in production what's in transit which i don't know the difference between in transit and shipping now but whatever what's in transmit trans what's in transmit is the fallen captain Transmat. yep there you go fallen captain collectible destiny legend statue savathun witch queen limited edition statue a techie and hoodie strange coin and psionic operator long sleeve shirt what is actively shipping to your house is weird twab t-shirt pride pin 2.0 agar scepter beanie and Moments of Triumph 2021 t-shirt. How is that in production and in shipping now? Because they had to produce before they shipped it. Mm, sure, sure, sure. Um, and then next, what do we got? Uh, did you post the same thing twice? Oh, EU store. Okay, this is the EU. I just, yeah, the, yeah it just it was more to the point, the, if you're waiting on something, check out Bungie's, you know, I think official Twitter is where they put, hey, there's, we put the shipping updates as they do every couple of months going, where's your stuff? It's here. It's different for the EU and the US, and um, yeah. Well, anybody who's interested in EU stuff, there you go. Are you not going right. to tell us what it was? Uh, cool guy. You don't like us. Says, in the US, do you? well, you can read it. Can you not read? You're, you're, you're not part, you're not part read of the EU either, so no. it, it doesn't apply to you. Oh uh, yeah, you sure you need it. Uh, okay. It feels like this needs to be pointed out with Solar 3.0 Hunter. Has four ranged charged melees. Half of them apply Scorch. Warlock has two ranged charged melees. Both apply Scorch. Titan, one ranged charged melee. It does not apply Scorch. Oh, Your hammer doesn't that. apply Scorch? Look at the favoritism there. Four for the Hunter. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. To, no, be fair, to be fair, Cool Guy says it so. No, 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 no. no. Cool Guy says it so, right? To be fair. But. Since I've been forced to play this damn Titan all season, you I can it. tell you. You're going to go that... you're stay on Titan, aren't you? No, you I don't. I really don't. I really it's don't. Favorite. But aside it's from the favorite. Hunters having four ranged ones and Warlocks having two ranged ones, that doesn't matter. Because you're one wall of fire that makes things explode? Absolutely make up for that. Potato, potato. Their, their melee is target one, maybe two people. Yours triggers an entire army to explode. Okay, so sit down, shut up, and enjoy your wall of fire. He does go on to say, "I do." He does go on to say, "Need to note: picking up the throwing hammer does give you cure, which is unique. I didn't even know that. Uh, but the whole scorched range melee argument stands as it is." Okay. Uh, Paul Tassi says, content vaulting is so weird from a storytelling perspective, as we just spent an hour talking about. It's like trying to get into a show, but the first four seasons are literally not streaming anywhere. So you just have to watch YouTube recaps or read Wikipedia. Right. Agreed. Yep. Bungie Store says, Bungie rewards early access pre-order for players who have acquired the Gallahorn. In Destiny 2 30th Anniversary Content Pack starts July 7th at 10 a.m. PT. Customers shopping that day should expect a virtual waiting room experience. As long as I as long as they've reserved, cause cause, cause I as long as they've reserved my Gallahorn Nerf gun, I don't mind the wait. But I'm getting you, the Nerf gun. Okay. You, you didn't get reserved. You have to go jump in on Jan on July 7th, which is Thursday of this week mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. Pacific. So 1, 1 p.m. respawn, a little before 1 p.m. You need to jump in and make sure you can buy you your very horn Gallahorn Nerf gun, mm -hmm. which which Bungie also put out a long, like how how Bungie's Gallahorn came to life with Nerf. So there is a whole article they put out this week if you're interested in reading yep. about Bungie's, Bungie's love affair with Nerf and why and how there's a giant Gallahorn Nerf gun. And when he says giant, for those of you that don't know, this is a one-to-one -one scale model of the Gallahorn. 
This is not a tiny little Nerf gun. This is not a medium-sized Nerf gun. This is a one-to-one -one scale Gallahorn rocket launcher Nerf gun that apparently shoots one big projectile and, like, three smaller projectiles, if what's been read is to believe. Okay? So there you have it. And I'm getting it. Is it a waste of money? <laughs> Absolutely. Do I care? No. Um, <clears throat> Sheets Forever says, last chance to claim your Guardian Games emblem for qualifying players. There you go. Uh, it says, Ooh, Guardian Games. It's your tower's finest emblem, emblem, isn't it? July 7th. Okay, yeah. deadline is July 7th. That's where it is. You should have put yeah. that on top. Yeah, and, and, and it's basically go to the Bungie store. It's one. If it's available to you, you can hit claim and it'll be in the game for you. Destiny Bulletin says new Bungie NetEase games are working on an unannounced first person shooter mobile game. It's been revealed. I think that's what you were talking about earlier. Well, well but it's you, not announced, here. They've announced it now, Bungie. It's, <laughs> what is it? it? It's been announced that they're working on it. it it's a something. Uh, You've announced it's happening. It, don't know what it is, but it's, it's also something. Here. It's mobile. So where is it? Mobile Destiny. Mm -hmm. okay. Update. With the release of Hotfix 4.1.0.4, the piercing sidearm... Oh, that's been talked about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, and that's... Okay, good. I knew I had seen oh, it somewhere. Yeah, that was the thing where if, if you're not getting the Triumph, reset your reset your artifact and buy all 25 mods, then you'll get the Triumph. Yeah. I knew I had seen it somewhere. I'm not totally crazy. Well, I'm not about that. And I, even, I, I, I have some real-time follow-up on the, um, the Grandmaster situation because the node is in the game. I want to go check. The recommended power is 1610. No, 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 no. So you get this wrong every time. I do. 1610 <laughs> is the power level of the enemies. Yes. You are always mm. capped at 25 power level so below. So if you add 25 to 1585. Thank you. Then Bungie, I'm dumb every time. You should make me less dumb every time and put things in the game. That actually yeah, they matters. recommend that you be that power level. You can always be above the power level, but they mm. still cap you at this fifteen eighty five. So you can be sixteen ten, but you still just only do fifteen eighty five damage. You you still do twenty five lower than what they yeah, actually says. See Bungie, which is very silly because because your depth nightfalls are fourteen ninety, and you tell me I need to be at least fourteen ninety. So my silly brain says, well, then clearly I need to be at least sixteen ten to go into the grandmasters because that's how numbers should work. And you're like, no. No, we don't believe in it. The Vanguard so, Alps the, and the Nightfall. The normal. What's the are, normal Nightfall? Isn't that fifteen ninety? Yeah, uh, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, fourteen ninety. No, the the next the next one down from a Grandmaster. Just oh, a fifteen ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, fourteen ninety, fifteen thirty, fifteen sixty, and your master is fifteen ninety. So I think up to yeah the so then fifteen ninety yeah. is. I mean, you can be above fifteen ninety, and but that's what the enemies are at. That's yeah. They need to be a bit more that's clear on insane. that. That's insane. So, guys, I've been reading. There's an article Use numbers about the Gallahorn, and it's talking about it comes in a forty inch box. You you reload it just like you reload the Gallahorn in game. It's <laughs> this is insane. This thing is huge. It's got it. It's got somebody holding it, so you get a you get a scale perspective on it. Good God. <laughs> oh, I need this in my life. Well, as soon as you finish your bit, I'll, I'll move on to my bit with my tips, tricks, guys, and yeah, bits this week. Yeah. I will. What's good on YouTube that we should be watching? Well, there was something that was I was unaware of, and I haven't really actually seen anybody else talk about this. The Pinata Pals did a video on this. Don't miss this enemy. Now there is an enemy in the Seven Missions. Mm -hmm. That I, I, kill him. I have never seen this enemy. I saw that video too. I I had never seen this enemy I kill him. anywhere. Uh, how do you not I, I found him like once or twice and just him. not thought of. Yeah, I've not actually thought about it. But the enemies in the, the final encounter will actually fight against this enemy as well. They're sitting in the corner having a having a mass Barney. I was like, so I, I just killed everything. And um, apparently there is a node on the Crown of Sorrow that when you do your unlocking of the Crown of Sorrow. That once you kill this enemy once per week, it will give you additional drops mm -hmm. and has a chance to drop, like high stat rolls and blah blah blah. But most so there is an additional to the currency that you need to focus weapons and armor and stuff. But yeah, yes, so the, there is a hidden enemy in the final room on every server mission. <clears throat> so go and check out the Pinata Pals for that video. Cree D 
did a Bump in the Night rocket launcher build. Now this is, I think it was with Chill Clip and one of the other perks that you can craft on this uh, rocket launcher. And he had a really good build going with the Star Starfire Protocol and throwing out the grenades, standing in a rift and regenerating, I think it was auto-loading holster, and just doing vast amounts of DPS on the ogre in the uh, dungeon. Uh, what's the dungeon on the Cosmodrome? Prophecy? No, it's Prophecy? not. No, the other one. It's um, the other dungeon. I can't remember now. There's one right there. I just he's... come at you. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just yes. can't remember the name. Yeah. Out of that little cave. Yeah, like Grasp of Avarice. Exotics, but it's not Grasp of Avarice. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, that first ogre that you come up against, he was doing DPS on that with this rocket launcher that he'd crafted with auto loading holster and chill clip and the Starfire Protocol with throwing out the grenade, standing in a rift, and just regenerating the grenade and doing so much DPS. So I thought it was a good rocket launcher for maybe the DPS build. So if you want to check that one out, go and check out Creed's video. And uh, one of these videos that I believe you pointed out parody this week, Fallout Plays did two videos this week that were quite interesting. One was six PvP builds for players who suck, and the other I one was one thing, to avoid, <laughs> one thing to avoid being killed in PvP. And they were really, they were really interesting videos. What? Yeah. I think the one thing to avoid being killed in PvP was that the one where he went to other YouTubers and he got their stats of what their field of view was, what their yeah. their yeah, turn ratio really and things were. Yeah, yeah, because I think he reached out to 10, 10 other YouTubers and streamers, you know, five on mouse and keyboard, five on controller, and basically said, you know, like what stats do you use, and also, you know, what you know, what physical gear, you know, what controller are you using, or what mouse, or I think what mouse was listed. Yeah, and it was interesting just to see what people were using, and then sort of like you know why they use what they used, and a little bit of like you know you know here's how I have it set up, and here's why I have it set up that way. Yeah, so it was, it was a little more than just the normal like, oh, I you know you should always take cover, and you should always just yeah. I hadn't really seen anybody else doing stuff like that with multiple. Oh, there was people one. Before. There was one back in the day where he got really in depth, and he he gets into the whole because your weapon sits on the right hand side of your body. If you peek out of the right side of cover, your weapon is out while a minimum of your body is out. But if you peek from the left side of cover, you have to pull more right. of your body out before you can fire type of stuff. You know, just little yeah, things yeah. like that. Which, Right. Yeah. 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 This one was a little, you know, a little less about, you know, the weapon mechanics it's about, you know, what settings are people using and why do they use? Because like Grenade or Jake had an interesting, like a different FOV set than everybody else. And he sort of goes into why why that's the case. So it, it was interesting to see like where the similarities were, and then where absolute differences were for different people's loadouts or I mean mm. uh, setups. Okay, it was. And I think that's the thing that I mean we we talked about it with the the Destiny like story with people new guardians coming in and missing out and things like that. But like like you've just said, respawn there there have been so many things that Destiny players have had to learn over the years, and some things are kind of just ingrained. Once you kind of know it, you know it. Like you were saying about the the right hand side of the weapon, you can only, if you peek out on a certain side of a, a wall, you you're more likely to get a headshot. Or if you look through, I mean, uh, when I was watching a, a Say Wallabra video this week, he he was looking through, he was looking at a, a corner of a wall, and he said, "I can see the guy's leg." through this this little crack like i'm squinting like where are you looking <laughs> jesus you know it's the little Which finesse things are you seeing that i'm not <laughs> yeah it's little finesse things that that i mean average players kind of pick up on and we just do for granted and then you've got the higher tier of players that kind of know other things as well and there's a lot it's there's a lot to learn in destiny but once you get into it there's you'll kind of really enjoy it but there is as Respawn said, there's there's fine details that you kind of see in some videos that kind of people don't re reiterate over and over again because I think they're fed up with just keep saying the things over and over again. But it, it's just handy to know. But Fallout Players did another video, I think it was the six PvP builds for players that suck, which were also pretty good. I mean, it goes over exotics and weapons that you might want to use to tackle certain different players. Did you watch this one, Respawn? No, I didn't, but I want to ask you, oh. was the um, the Hunter Weighted Throwing Knife one of those builds? I believe so. Yeah. I, there was one with the Hunter Invis, which was quite cool. That's what I used um, against, you know, Guardian Downcast. 
<laughs> I want to so, take yeah. it on them because they they took a shot at me about how I crush invisibility when I was against them. I'm like, I'm a hunter, you know. Titans when, punch things, so, warlocks when, fly. When, when I turn invis. When when what did they want? take a pot shot at you? Uh, you have to look at their episodes. It was like four four episodes ago, I think. They were talking about invisibility crutches and how I crutch. I'm sorry, Guardian Dan. Them. It takes him a while to listen and then refire a shot. <laughs> no, I fired the shots at them already the, the okay. week that it happened. But I'm just teasing them at this point. But You're uh, now teasing them on our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? But um, no, the, the, in, the, the throwing knife, not, not the invis one, but the throwing knife, if you have the Hunter Gauntlets that empower your weighted throwing knife, that thing does kill at some pretty crazy angles. I'm not even going to lie. Because if yeah, you do I've, it right, that. throwing the knife, you have almost no hit detection, right? You throw the knife, you're probably going to miss, right? But if you throw the knife at the ground and it hits the wall at a 90 degree angle and that angle just kind of goes somewhere in a general area, that knife will find somebody. <laughs> and it'll kill them. I don't know how it does it because... Sometimes I'll get that throwing knife kill seconds after I've thrown it. I'm like, huh, that's where did you go? <laughs> right? But it's a fun build. So, yeah, anyway, good. Um, okay. Ibontis has his bobblehead locations, the final locations for week six. And something I completely forgot about is that I've been picking up the bobblehead location of the bobbleheads and doing the automatons. And the automatons completed once I've done the, the final one. But then the bubble heads hadn't completed on my triumph list, and I realised I had to go back to the helm and actually go and display them around that room. And once that happened, then I unlocked the triumph for actually doing it because I was thinking, well, I've done these e each week that they've come up, and I've picked up all the bubble heads that I think. But it only says I've got like three bubble heads done. I'm like, ah, I've got to go back to the helm do that. So, Ibontis has the locations for the bubble head and the automatons. If you've been doing those, as of course had two cool videos this week. Do you want to be Captain America? Yes, you do. And there's a Titan build for that with the throwing um, shields and the new uh, Titan gauntlets that you can get this season. And the Monte Carlo. Yeah. yeah. So check that one out. And then to answer your question, Bad Juju is back. Yeah, it is. But is it better than the Outbreak Perfected? They're both As very across, good. The fact that it's even... As of course, has a good video debating those two. Look... It doesn't matter if it's better than the perfected because perfected is amazing too, but the fact that it's even a contender is amazing. I love it. <laughs> and then, as I said earlier, Sirius Sirius has a video going over the testing the incandescent perk, which is worth a watch. And Time Sausage Gaming has the new lore secrets around the Leviathan. And then, as always, recently Plunder the Booty Channel, so many builds again this week. There's been about three or four different builds. Uh, go and check out his channel and then further down in our uh, like show notes we have the season of the haunted guides so you've got a guide from fallout plays going over the solar 3.0 you've got all the bobblehead locations you've got all the hidden triumphs for doing all the di different hidden enemies around the leviathan um, any other videos that might help you and then we have throne world guides uh, further down and then in any other external links that we think may help you like Going to uh, Secret Scrublands, we've got D2 Armor, uh, D2 Armor Picker, D2 Gunsmith, Destiny Emblem Collectors, Cosmo Dome, uh, the 100.io if you want to go and find people to um, do said activities, dungeons, raids, anything. Go and check those out. So yeah, that's, that's it. Did you did you not see Cheese's video bemoaning the same thing you were bemoaning? A yes, but ago? Cheese, I'm sorry, mate. I'm I am sorry. I moaned about it first. I got in there. You've you've <laughs> only just realised that half the vault is like you know gone. Uh, yeah, Cheese was uh, put a video out this week going over what I said with the armor 1.0s uh, back when it happened at the beginning of the season that the mods and the perks on those have just kind of been de deprecated and you can't use them. It just and he had certain builds for di doing different things like I did. And I, I feel your pain, Cheese. I'm I'm really sorry. I'm there with you. But over the last couple of weeks, there have been other people and Bungie have not responded. It, it's really frustrating. So hopefully they respond to your video and you'll have an update. So you get out there for us because I'm still hanging on to them. I'm not deleting them. 
because I want Bungie to go back on what they've done. Yeah, stay strong. Yeah, yeah. I saw he said he was hanging on to this. I wonder if he had tried to reach out, or at least you know, you know, use use whatever you know public or private ways he had to go. Hey, guys, is this a thing? You've not mentioned it. You've said nothing about this anywhere. L- l- let me give you a chance to say something before I go. Uh, hey, you, you took all these things away from us. You broke it all. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting. It's like, oh, Jesus, Jesus is getting hit by it. You're getting hit by it. I'm sure many other people who desperately held on to their armor 1.0 things were like, no, no, I can use these forever. You told me I could. I even brought back all the sunset weapons. I actually, I, I disagree with that because I think the names you just mentioned armors. are the only people that do that. Therefore, no, I'm, the only I, people uh, that do No, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some building, building things since before building things was cool. Yeah, but aka um, all me time? and uh, one of the booty tells me what to do. <laughs> but to keep it all this time, I don't think so. No, I think that I think that's limited to a very few special people. Yeah, that's that's what the vault space is for. They give you the vault space. They don't tell you how to use the vault space. Right. Well, I think that's. I should look and see if we had any. Well, actually, we did have one bit of feedback this week. There was a question that I could not answer, and actually, I wonder if maybe Night Demon can. I'll on try. Twitter, let me. Let me go find. It was one where I, I tried to find a good reason or a good answer to. Uh, this is from, this is from Wayne Wayne No Eyes No Wayne No Eyers, on Twitter. Uh, guys, need some help trying to farm the small gifts on the Dreaming City. Can't find the, any actual clarification anywhere online. But does a small gift drop once per week per account or per character? I've read both online, and it's either RNG is hitting me or per account. So he's looking for these small gifts that drop on the Dreaming City. Let's get to the kitties. And it does it drop one per... Is basically, is it a per account drop or a per character drop? And do you have an idea? Because he says, basically, I found both online because I'm sure in the history of Destiny, it's been both. But what is it today? And I I what, don't know. Cause... I don't understand. The, what, you have to explain with a bit more context. Okay, so on in the uh, Dreaming City, I'm, I'm trying to look for the actual name of the thing. It, it's a small gift. It's called a small gift. That's the actual name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, on... Oh, yeah. I remember the like the the like the rice cakes on the moon kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, you get those and you give them to the cats. I honestly don't know because you just get them so often. Um, yeah, well, apparently he's not getting them so often. So <laughs> has yeah, he so... tried? Has he tried doing it on like? the three different characters so go and do a well, yeah, isn't but, it you have to yeah, do yeah, the, like, the, that weekly sorry. mission pick up the bounty from petra and go and do the weekly mission and then you get a chance for it to drop at the end of the mission possibly right, well, yeah well, yeah well that's what he's saying you know he's saying you know he i'm assuming he's trying on multiple characters because he's saying is it a per character drop or per account drop because i'm guessing he's tried it on the three characters and is not getting them to drop so just trying to figure out you know is this is it is it just RNG being stupid and hating him, or is it just you don't get you know possibly RNG just hating is him? Is just limited? Uh, yeah, it could be just limited to one a week. As now. of this year, as of a couple months ago, it says only one small gift can be acquired per character per week, and there are only nine cats to find. Once a small gift is given to a cat statue, you will be rewarded with a legendary weapon or a piece of armor that comes from the Dreaming City loot pool. So this is as of May sixth. So this year, not too long ago. Okay, so so May 6, 2022. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so it sounds like it's a per character drop. It's one per character per week. Yeah. So we'll go with that. And what's what sort? Can you throw a link in the show notes for Night Demon? Or yeah, I got you. At least tell us where, you know, just, yeah, just where. Okay, it's serious. Link came from, just the... So here it is right here. Copy and then paste. Okay, cool. okay yeah. So we're, we're going to say one per character per week. And uh, we'll go with that. Yeah, which is which he brings up a great point. That's the other problem with the game that's been around since 2014, basically, in what D2 since 2017. Everything is out there. There's so much old information, and it's so hard to find what is in the game today. How does it work now? Yeah, and as a bonus, that website also gives you all cat locations in case that's also something you're wondering. There we go. Um, did you just meow? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I can't do even with you. <laughs> no one can. It's fine. Right. Thank you for joining us. Your Titans are parody and night demon. Your hunter is no one responds in real life, cosplaying as the de- destiny season dictates, as a Titan this season. Oh. Your lore scribe 
is sitting in a theme park sending us pictures of roller coasters and the merriment he's enjoying while not being here to read us lore. So you should send not arf messages and ask him how his vacation went. You can email the show at two times in a hunter at hotmail.com. We're on Twitter at two times in a show hunter. We're everywhere on the social mediums. You can find us Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're there. You know how the search works. We're two times in a hunter. Find all your five favorite guardians, setting the night- nightmares ablaze, asking for directions in the underbelly, trying to figure out how to find cats in dreaming cities, and uh, hauling loot keys around and giant wrenches, whacking people in the head with them. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, everywhere fine podcasts are sold. Watch the show on YouTube. And uh, if, if you're feeling sassy, you can go to twitch.tv slash no one responds in real life and get the live uncut version of the show. Um, I won't say it's family hostile, but I'm not going to say it's family friendly. <laughs> but it, it certainly is a thing. It is the pure, raw, uncut version of this show. So, um, And sometimes it makes no sense to listen to it. D- do with that as you will. And uh, with that, you can tell the people any parting advice or not. Uh, we'll see you next week. Ooh, suits you. Deuces! Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast. I don't I don't think his wife is gonna is gonna fly for that. Well she can't <laughs> Did you get sh- by a badger again? <laughs> there, there are so many words I could say to that, could just go away. <laughs> what the badger thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> not funny she just uh, makes I mean, she makes stuff this. up she makes stuff up <laughs> and you guys believe it uh we don't care if it's true it's funny it's not funny <laughs> very terrible <laughs> <laughs>